the premier online speed chess tournament. A knockout filled with tension, drama, quick tactics, and shocking moments. Oh my gosh! For the last seven years and counting, the best blitz and bullet players in the world have flocked to chess.com to prove their worth at this format. <gasps> Excitement reigns every year God. with major upsets and intense battles. This year, 12 invitees and four qualifiers face off for the title. Dozens have tried, but only two have ever worn this crown. Magnus makes it look easy. You he, it. Over. he wins the speed chess championship fifth in a row. Who will be this year's Blitz King? It's time to find out. Welcome to the 2023 Speed Chess Championship, presented by Coinbase. Welcome back to the 2023 Speed Chess Championships, presented by Coinbase. We are excited to welcome Coinbase as the presenting partner of the Speed Chess Championships. This year's event is sure to be a treat, and I'll be joined today by Grandmaster Benjamin Bach. Benjamin, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty well, Eric. Happy to be here with you. Uh, yeah, as you said, it's the start of a new season, and what a matchup we have today. We have Hikaru Nakamura against Yu Yang Yi. Eric, how do you feel about this matchup? I mean, pretty much every time Hikaru plays, even in the first rounds of these events, I do watch it. Uh, I find it a little bit relatable where Hikaru is playing, generally one of the underdogs, and uh, try to see how many upsets can be scored um, or how many wins in a row Hikaru is going to go for. Yeah, no, for sure. But, Hikaru is definitely a hefty favorite in this matchup. Yeah. Let's have a very quick look at the bracket. Eric, is there any matchup that stands out to you? Because in this one, Hikaru is a big favorite, but there are certainly some matchups that are definitely going to be close. Yeah, like, I mean, this field this year looks to me like the strongest one ever, ever assembled. Um, I am not as familiar with Yu Yangi's game online. And as a result, I definitely consider this one of the more, like, uh, imbalanced first round matchups. Just a lot of unknowns there, but we know Hikaru has been in top form online recently. And um, the only people I can really see upsetting him would be some of those very top uh, online online players. And, and I don't have Yangi in that category uh, as of yet. Yeah, no, me neither. I think the only one that really has a good chance against Hikaru is, of course, uh, Magnus. We, we look forward to potentially seeing them in the final again. But uh, Eric, let's have a look at the game analytic, anal analytics of this matchup. Yeah, we're thrilled to have Deloitte, uh, a leader in their field as an official partner of the Speed Chess Championships. Their dedication to excellence, Lines perfectly with the ethos of chess and the chess.com mission to grow the game and the sport of chess. Deloitte is now the official insights partner of the SEC, so let's dive into the Deloitte game analytics. Right, so we see that their overall blitz head to head is that Hikaru has had 29 wins, 5 draws, and 9 losses against Yu Young Yi. You know, there are players who have had a worse record. They've never played in Bullet, and honestly, that's one thing that could be a little bit worrisome for Yu Yang Yi. I don't really see him as a very experienced Bullet player. Also, this is Yu Yang Yi's debut in the SCC Championship. Yeah, I don't don't recall playing him in any of the Bullet events that Chess.com has hosted, and it even I even remember watching maybe a couple of years ago, maybe when Ding was playing, that he had some internet issues and in bullet that's usually uh, you know if internet issues there it uh it's game over so hopefully no no in internet issues i have seen that a couple times from from the chinese players but uh yeah um you never know these days with people in bullet they might be playing on their private accounts um there's so many players that are better at bullet than i would have would have expected yeah, no, for sure. And 1 plus 1 is always a little bit different than 1 plus 0. In 1 plus 0, your speed is really the most important thing. If you don't have that, you're just going to lose way too many games on time. But with 1 plus 1, it's really all about your intuition. And Eric, let's have a very quick look at our smarter chess prediction. Yeah, that's a pretty, if you ask me ahead of time, 20, 20 and a half to 7 and a half. It's a pretty big margin, but we've seen Hikaru win with even you know bigger numbers than that so i think i agree with that the one plus one score maybe 
Maybe that's where Hikaru is actually going to be even stronger, but makes sense to me. Right, right. and it gives Hikaru a 95% win probability. Eric, what should Yu Yang Yi to give himself the best chance uh, for a win against Hikaru in this matchup? Well, I think one good thing is because he doesn't play that much online, he doesn't have that psychological disadvantage that you see some players face when they're playing Hikaru because we've seen him, we've played him so many times, lost him so many times. He might not have that, so just going in with that like open mind, starting off strong, not getting phased or tilted, um, just trying to frustra uh, frustrate Hikaru uh, over the board. Um, that yeah, might be one sure. thing he has going for him. Yeah, and I think for Yuyang Yi, it's also really important to keep it close in the 5 plus 1 and 3 plus 1 portions. Hikaru can really run away in the 1 plus 1, but he's got to keep it close before it comes to that. Yeah, I think always when, when you're playing Hikaru, you got to avoid the tilt. But let's take a look at the uh, community predictions. Right, so 99% of our community predicts that this is going to be a win for Hikaru. Only 1% predicts a win for Yuyang Yi. 5,411 people predicted a win for Hikaru and 44 brackets have predicted a win for Yu Yan Yi. I am... Um, well, I'm hopeful for those 44. They are pretty bold to uh, bet against Hikaru. That's one of the things. All the years of the SEC, you generally would not be doing well if you bet against Hikaru. Yeah, and he's generally going pretty deep. And as we see, the players are getting ready. Hikaru is also streaming on the kick channel. Yu Yang Yi in, in the Zoom call. So, Eric, Hikaru starting out with one with white pieces. What do you expect from him? Do you expect him to open up with E4, D4, Knight of 3, maybe in English? I guess it depends how he's feeling, but English is, is uh, generally one of his, his nice options for keeping the game imbalanced. I expect him to play pretty much everything, though, um, by the time this uh, match is underway. Right, yeah, no, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him play, let's say, Knight of 3, followed by B3. That's often how he likes to start off these matchups. I think Hikaru generally does not prepare for the SEC. Maybe we can expect some preparation from Yu Yang Yi? I think so, but um, if you were preparing against Hikaru and you look at his online games, it's going to be a lot of work because between all the events, the SECs, the Title Tuesdays, he's played pretty much everything, and I think... You know, openings are not going to be the main issue when you face Hikaru. It's the problems he, he gives you over the board. But I think we're about to begin the first round. And, uh, well, that wasn't uh, one of the opening options, Benjamin, A3. No, look at the disrespect. He opens up with A3 against Yu Yang Yi and takes a sip from his cup. See Yu Yang Yi going for uh, a setup with Knight of 6, E6, and D5. And Hikaru going with B4. Eric, what do you make of this whole setup? Just trying to play some chess. I think uh, Hikaru wants these games to be, um, you know, like just fighting over the board, not too much theory, and, and being able to test Yang Yi's, you know, resolve in, in some uh, tough positions. Uh, I think he's just looking to play some, some good old-fashioned blitz without too much theory against his generally well-prepared opponent, I'd say. Yu Yang Yi's mm -hmm. usually, usually known for that, so, yeah, nothing too theoretical. Right, I see Yu Yi going for a very set, solid setup with Bishop B7, Kings at Castles, and B6. These positions would be pretty standard. It's pretty standard if White's pawns would be in A2 and B3. He would the pawn on B4. You know, it gives White a little bit more space on the queen side. So it hasn't worked out in the worst way for Hikaru. And Eric, I wanted to ask you. So we see that Hikaru is streaming. I mean, we both stream. What do you make of this decision? Do you think it's going to help him or do you think it might distract him a little bit? If it was anybody else, I'd be like, don't do it. It's going to take away from your chess. But with Hikaru, I mean, he's had some of his best results on, on stream. So in this case, it looks like it really does uh, relax him or, or help, help with the results. But for most people, you know, we're not Hikaru and it's just an additional uh, distraction. Yeah, and we see a trade on d5, the move queen c2 now by Hikaru. He could be aiming for a move like h4, followed by a potential knight g5 to start some business on the king side. Usually that isn't that easy to deal with uh, for black, but Hikaru takes on d5 first. Do you think a move like h4 is going to come later, or is going to play it very solid? I think the move b5 is, is a more indication that he's playing it very solid here. Yeah, yeah, after b5, I think white's going to, you know, I don't know, play knight d4, just fight for the c6 square, but play a bit slower. I wanted to ask uh, Benjamin. We have new uh, viewers here who aren't so familiar with Yu Yang Yi's game, as as we mentioned, this first time playing in the SEC. Like, how would you describe? If we're trying to like advertise the match. How would you describe his style and uh, in chess and and how 
why he's a dangerous player. Yeah, Yu Yang Yi, very strong grandmaster from China. He's rated around 2720. Um, he's generally pretty well prepared with the white pieces and the black pieces. I'd say overall he's a solid player, but give him the opportunity and he can also play very aggressively. And Eric, I am not a big fan of what Hikaru is doing here in the opening. He's clamping down on that c5 break, but now that he's playing knight d4, he's having trouble developing that light square bishop on f1 as they will always hang the pawn on g2. Yeah, he's playing uh, very risky here, not going for uh, any early, early castle, but I think Hikaru does that sometimes. I mean... The nice thing with his style, he, he tries something, he tries to play maybe aggressive. If it works out, great. If it doesn't, he can switch to, you know, other openings, other systems. And, and we've seen even when he falls behind in a match, his ability to just rack up the wins and, and, and climb back up is, is second to none. So um, he can afford to take a few more risks with his, with his uh, style, I'd say. And uh, yeah, he's resolved that tension, that pressure on the G2 pawn. Now he goes bishop to E2. And the question really is, Eric, is that pawn on C6 an asset or a weakness? We see here the move queen D3 by Yu Yang Yi. Could we potentially be aiming for a quick repetition with bishop E2, queen E5, bishop F3? He choruses no and goes rook to C1, but now it's going to be difficult for him to castle. And perhaps now Yu Yang Yi has the time to bring one of his rooks into the game. Yeah, I mean, maybe white should have tried to repeat, but... Um... This, this is the kind of position where, as you as described, like Yu Yang Yi is a very solid player. He's going to just slowly, slowly, you know, reroute that knight and, and make some progress. I think this posi position is very comfortable for Black for, uh, for a first game for, for Yu Yang Yi. Yeah, no, for sure. No weaknesses for Black. And King E2 by Hikaru. I mean, I don't know, Eric. I have the feeling that he's playing around a little bit too much. We see the move E5 by Yu Yang Yi, threatening E4, now Rook E8. I don't know, I don't like this king on e2, it, and black doesn't have any weaknesses. I, I feel like Yu Yang Yi's best chances are in the opening and in the early middle game. Hikaru's real strength comes later, especially in the time scrambles. But this opening has really been uh, all Yu Yang Yi. Yeah, I mean, this is a perfect opportunity um, for, for Yu Yang Yi to, to like, get some like confidence. This position, he sees the king on e2, black's fully developed, I mean... I think where there's going to be a disadvantage is when the players are low on time and we have sharp positions. But here, Yu Yang Yi, totally comfortable, fully developed. He's, uh, uh, he's, he's doing real well here. Exactly. So move but we know who the slippery is, rook. you know. <laughs> Hikaru is very slippery in, in these positions where his king is on. I mean, he's played the Bong Cloud before, you know, successfully. So, king on E2, you still have to look for some concrete breakthrough if you're Yu Yang Yi here. Maybe f5 and knight f6 or something, but um, try to put some pressure on white's position. Yeah, no, that one definitely makes sense. He went knight d5 to tag the rook, uh, which had to move over to keep protecting the pawn on a3. And even though I like Yu Yang Yi's position, look at the clock, Eric. He's already down a minute. Like you said, Hikaru is the slippiest player in the game, and you definitely want to try not to fall too far behind us. He is going to find resources. He is going to find a way to hang on and potentially maybe even swing this one around. Yeah, I mean, um, Black being down 90 seconds at some point, he's going to going to have to look at the clock. I don't think he's, you know, you're playing your first game. You're not always taking a look at the time. You're just making sure you're not blurring the pieces, getting all comfortable. But against Hikaru... As soon as he, Hikaru has like a slightly worse position, I notice you know he plays quickly and he puts pressure everywhere else on the board. Um, so here, but it's definitely not better here or super comfortable yet. But the pressure's on Black with the, with the time situation, and that's going to be definitely a recurring theme today. And I'm sure Hikaru now going for a thing. He's still up on the clock, but it's dwindling a little bit. Maybe you move like queen c4 to put some pressure on that knight. He can also bring this rook into the game, but maybe what Yu Yang Yi wants to do is go for this move queen h3. That might be the reason behind that move queen e6. He goes rook d6 first to put pressure on the pawn on c6, but it's always going to be very difficult to increase the pressure on that pawn as white always has pressure on your knight on d5. Yeah, I think, I mean, black is happy with most of the end games. if bishop takes d5, even taking with the rook. Um, but uh, I don't think black wants to trade queens, you know, immediately right now at the same, either, because then, then white's king position is kind of justified. 
uh, on e2 once the queens are off no problem mm -hmm. and we see the move h4 by ikaru queen e7 by yu yang yi i like i like black's position but it is a little bit difficult to see how he's really going to improve maybe something like king h8 followed by that plan that you mentioned earlier with f5 knight of six that brings a potential e4 push in and but that being said, it's even more difficult to see how white is ever going to improve. Hikaru goes for rook to h1. What do you think he's planning with that one? I think he's letting, he's just moving back and forth, just letting essentially uh, Yu Yangi uh, decide where the position's headed. Because, yeah, as you mentioned, black, black's kind of dictating things here. White doesn't really have any targets. Um, the queen side is closed, and the e5 pawn is not really uh, accessible very easily for, for Hikaru. So. No real natural targets here, just moving back and forth and, and letting Yu Yang Yi uh, decide. Right, and we see Yu Yang Yi moving back and forth here with Queen E7 to G6. Hikaru now has moved his king over to G2. I think definitely a better square than E2. I mean, if this default ever opens up, you could easily get checkmated. And again, like Yu Yang Yi is struggling. I, I like his position, but he's struggling to come up with a plan, and that's why he's also falling further behind on the clock. Yeah, he's got to decide internally at some point, you know, there might be two things going on. Like, hey, do I repeat moves? Am I okay with the draw this first game? Or, no, I mean, there's the other mentality where he's told himself, maybe before the match, I need to try to be Hikaru early on and get rid of that psychological barrier, um, take, take some risks. Because Hikaru definitely gives you decent positions. That's one thing in Blitz. He'll play some uh, funny openings, or, or, or but the position will always have some fighting chances for, for both sides. For sure, yeah. And with this move, Queen G4, Eric, Hikaru sacrificed the pawn on C6, but Yu Yang Yi did not take it. And I think he made a very good point. Even though Yu Yang Yi is playing with the black pieces, it's very natural that you feel like, hey, I'm playing with black in the first game. You know, I'm happy with a draw here. But I think you have to take all of the chances you can get against Hikaru. So if you have a good position with white, with black, you're going to have to go for it. As there will be games where uh, those chances might not be there. Yeah. Yeah, now, I mean, now we're seeing the position change up a little bit. Black would love to move the queen and push this f7 pawn up to f5 dislodging that bishop, but queen e6 was one of the only ways to do it because black's queen has no other safe square. Yeah, so Ikaru trades the queens and goes g4, clamping down on that f5 push, but maybe Yu Yingyi can prepare now with the move g6, although there Hikaru could go g5 himself. We see him going rook to d6, but Eric, I don't think it's a real threat for black to take on c6, as white can always double up the rooks on a c-file and get the c-pawn back. Yeah. Um, Hikaru is hoping for knight takes c6. He's banking on long term pressure on the c file where you know you lose the c6 pawn, but you're going to eventually win the, win the c7 pawn with some c file pressure. So just setting up some traps, you could say. Um, ways for black to, to mess up the position a bit. Exactly. We'll see. It should be fine still, but Hikaru's probably thinking, you know, this is not. This is not a risky thing to try. Play quickly, shuffle a bit on the queen side, and uh, you know, see if Yang Yi can, can handle playing down 15, 20 seconds. Right, and we see Bishop of 5, rookie 7. Now Hikaru could trade and go into a double rookie game. This pawn on e5 is a little bit weak. If Hikaru can get his king over to e4, it looks pretty unpleasant for black. And he's up 10 seconds, and there goes the king. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how he does it, but... Getting into an endgame where white's king is already on e4, d5, that's not going to be uh, easy to hold at all for, for, for Yang Yi. I mean, once Hikaru gets active, that's usually not a, not a good sign. He doesn't give you much uh, breathing room. Right, he did sack that c6 pawn again. Now he goes back to, with his rook to c4. If Yu Yang Yi can get the king to e6 here, this should be pretty fine for black. And wait, actually, Eric, if he can get the rook to d5 and c5, there could also be chances mm -hmm. for black. Is he preparing king d6 right here? I guess there's... I think so, yeah. And if d4, I don't know. If f5 check works, but then maybe rook. Black has to make a tough choice here. Followed by yep. b5. He's down to four seconds. He didn't... Oh, that's a blunder. Rook g3. Yes. Rook... Yes. Nikaru immediately sees that, of course. Yeah, I take the pawn on g7, and you're not hanging on to that c7 pawn. I think eventually you're going to drop it. So... 
Looks like Hikaru is going to win this first game and Yu Yi loses on time. A tough position, but you really try, you really have to try to avoid that, to just lose games like that. That's so frustrating. The entire game, Black is doing fine, maybe on the better side of things, but just in a bit of a time scramble, Hikaru outmaneuvered uh, Yang Yi's, you know, king pretty, pretty comfortably there. And that's, uh, that's not the start. <laughs> Those are some good right, positions yeah. for, for Black. Yeah, that was a completely fine game for, for Yu and Yi. I think he just had to keep a little bit more time on the clock. He also had to be a little bit more confident. And in some cases, he could have taken the opponent C6. I felt like he played a little bit too passively. Also, going for a move repetition earlier. So let's see what he's going to do with the white piece. He goes for the Spanish for Knights. Yeah, I, um, Yang Yi, as, as you mentioned earlier, very well prepared. He knows some systems, you know, pretty comfortably. And I think he's mainly like an E4 player. I don't think we'll see as much D4 or, or other openings today, but he does know his classical E4 stuff very, very well. Mm -hmm. And we have a pretty typical position here for the Rui Lopez wide maneuvering their knight at G3. Now he could go for the D4 push, and that's what he does. Knight G6 by Karu, H3, pretty typical move to stop bishop to G4. And the difficult thing for black is that white right now has more space in the center, and it's often going to be difficult for black to go for that same d5 push. So generally white is considered to be a little bit better after rook d1 followed by let's say bishop e3 and queen e2. Yeah, a little bit more space, but it is going to be a maneuvering middle game. And unlike the, the last game, I think Yu's going to have to make sure to be a bit more mindful of the clock. Uh, because even in these solid, equal looking positions, just one slip up against Hikaru when you're down to 5-10 seconds, like the previous game, and, and the game's over. So. Um, he knows this position, play quickly. Right, and Yu Yang Yi played for the maneuver with bishop e3, queen e2, and rook 81. And I like what Hikaru has done on the queen side. He's pushed the pawns up to a4 and b5. So then now this move bishop e6 is a little bit uncomfortable to deal with. Are you going to go b3? Well, then black can grab the open a file. Uh, you can go bishop b1, but the bishop is a little bit more passive there. Or go a3, but then your entire queen side is frozen. So even though white has more space in the center, Hikaru found a pretty good way to uh, uh, grab some space himself. Yeah, I was going to say, all those options you provided, A3 or B3, none of them looked good. I think Yang Yi, I agreed with that, and just going with four for Knight F5 with uh, probably some sort of Bishop takes H6, you know, uh, in the cards. Yeah, no, I like Knight F5 by Yu Yang Yi, a very direct approach. I think Bishop takes H6 is a threat, and it's not clear to me how Hikaru should deal with it. I mean, he can take the Knight on the 5 but white will recapture and his knight has to move back to the passive f8 square and perhaps white can even consider sacrificing there. So let's see what Ikaru is going to do. I mean, he is known to be super resilient even when he's forced with his back against the wall. Yeah, I mean, Hikaru, if, if he definitely knows bishop takes h6 is, is, uh, is threatened right now. So if he allows it, then that means he's calculated, he's comfortable with the consequences. Um... But, uh, you know, Hikaru's strength, like Yu Yang Yi, very good calculation, you know, technical player. But uh, I think Hikaru doesn't mind testing him early on. And, and if Bishop takes H6 is, leads to a, um, a fighting position, he might encourage that. So I wouldn't be surprised to see something besides Bishop takes F5. Right, and Eric, look at the clock. Yu Yang Yi now up 90 seconds. So do you think in that first game he was maybe shaking off a little bit of rust? Hikaru probably also dealing with some opening problems here, but this one is definitely looking better for Yu Yang Yi. Yeah, I think, I mean, um, it's still early on in the opening stage, and Yang Yi's going to be pretty well prepared in a lot of those positions. It's just later in the middle game when he's outside of the opening that I'm a little uh, concerned about his time usage. But... Um, I do expect him to be pretty well prepared in these E45 systems. Right, and we see Hikaru trading on a 5 followed by Knight of 8. Is Yu Yang Yi going to go for the sacrifice with Bishop takes H6? I guess the idea is that after Black takes, you can maybe include capturing on E5 as well and then take with the Queen on H6. The Black Queen on D8 will be hanging, also the Black King on G8 is exposed, but after something like Queen E7, to me, it's not 100% obvious how White is going to continue the attack. But if you don't go for it, Black can go for E4 followed by D5, and, and there Black looks to be completely fine. Yeah, I think here White needs to open up the position somehow. 
So taking even on e5 once might be might be the way to play and then follow up with g4, but Yang Yi definitely needs to keep the position open. You got the bishop pair here, allowing black to play e4 is not is not in the spirit of the position. So anything but that. And he's gone for it. He's sacked on e5 and traded on e5 and now queen e7 by Hikaru. He has to keep defending the knight on f6. So let's see what white is going to do here. Maybe something like g4, g5, attacking the knight. If the knight moves, you have f6, attacking the queen and threatening a checkmate. Definitely some issues here for Ikoro, and Yu and Yi has the time to come up uh, with something good. Yeah, knight g5 also. I was looking at just to keep keep black uh, stuck there, but um, it's not totally clear to me what what the threat is. I think Yang Yi probably has to just bank on there being compensation and like an initiative here. I don't see any. I mean, knockout punch. I don't know about you, Benjamin, but I see a Me check, neither, and yeah. that's about it. Yeah, you have a check over here, but Ikoro just goes king h8, and if you check again, he can block with one of the knights. So, it's it's not obvious to me. I, I do like the fact that Yu Ying Yi went for it. Again, like, you only get so many opportunities against Hikaru. He's often going to provoke you a little bit, and you just have to go for it in, in such cases. Um, so, so let's see what he's going to come with. I still like this idea of g4. Let's say black goes e4, there's g5. The thing for Ikaru, though, is that he doesn't have to move this knight. He can protect it with his other knight, and in case white takes, you can recapture it with either the knight or with the queen, and it's not too bad, and, and there we see the move g4 on the board. Yeah, the g5 move you mentioned, I mean, g5 and then f6 coming. What, uh, what am I missing? What's Ikaru planning after g5 here? I think he has to go knight h to h7, and there we go. So in case white takes, you can now recapture. I think with the queen, that looks completely fine to me. You pretty much force a queen trade there. The knight on f6 will defend the pawn on e4. So maybe Yu Yang Yi has to delay taking on f6 and move this knight first, but he takes on f6 right away. Yeah, I mean, white's going to go knight g I mean, the problem is there's some opposite bishops and this e3 move at the right time. It how good is that e pawn for white? Exactly. Yeah, he's up uh, this h pawn and perhaps maybe these doubled f pawns. But black can also go for a move like a3, taking this pawn over here. And after b4, maybe something like bishop e5. And it's very difficult to protect that pawn on c3. So, like you mentioned, with the with the opposite color bishops, Hikaru will have excellent drawing chances here. And he's also up 30 seconds on the clock. So let's see how he will do it. I like the a3 move you mentioned, just to like break up the pawns definitely looks like a little unpleasant to to deal with but i think hikaru is just thinking here like he realizes he's losing the e-pawn but how can he make it as messy as possible and make white's you know conversion as uh as hard as possible right he's played rook a to d8 so his idea is that in case white takes um eventually he can include a trade on d1 so let's see, maybe Yu Yang Yi has to take on d8 first himself. I think in this game it's going to be very unlikely that Hikaru will win, especially since there is always that one second increment. But, you know, a draw with the black pieces is also a fine result here. He keeps his lead in the match, and then he can try again with white. Yeah. Can black go rook d2 here? Uh, that's what I'm curious about. Rook d2, rook e2... Uh -huh, and just trade off everything and hold the uh, the end game without like the rooks and and the bit and the knights. Yeah, is it is it uh, is it holding? Good question. Good question. I don't know. I mean, it's it seems rather risky as after all of these trades, all of your pawns are on light square, so it's very yeah. easy for them to to drop off. I think if black uh, keeps the pawns even on the queen side, it's probably a draw. But if white goes up a pawn on the queen side, I think it should just be winning because white also has this past h pawn. So that would be a little bit risky for Ikaru, who's actually in real danger of losing this game. He's also down 15 seconds, and he settles on the move rook d5 to pick up that pawn on f5. Yeah, so if knight f5, black's going to take on f5, and if bishop takes... Uh, yeah, bishop takes e4, knight takes e4. I think I'd do bishop takes. I would keep the knight... Always have this impression, you know, having the knight in the end game. I'm gonna have some tricks, and, and I have the extra pawn. And then with, uh, yeah, if I take, there we go. 
Uh, and we see the move rook d2 now by Kar. His idea is that in case of rook e2, now you can trade and go bishop f4, attacking the knight. So Yu Yung Yi takes on c6 first and goes rook e2, a3 by Hikaru. A tricky little move. Now you never want to trade as black gets his pawn on b2, which is going to be queen right after. And we see knight e4 by Yu Yung Yi. Does this allow Hikaru to just trade everything down and go after the pawn on c3? I think he it should does. just be able to hold there. But maybe Hikaru wants to go for more and play knight h5, knight f4 or something. I guess it depends. But somehow Hikaru t made that like very, you know, very comfortable to hold by playing this rook b2, a3 idea. Once that pawn's on a3, I don't see how white can try for anything. Yeah, now it's just a draw. He takes an e2. Eric, I wanted to point out this real quick. After, yeah, it's just going to be a draw now. But after bishop to a5, could Yu Yang Yi have tried taking on b2? Followed by c4. Black gets two passers on b2 and c4, but they're blocked by this bishop. And why now has passed a has passed a pawn and h pawn? Maybe that would give an uh, Yu Yang Yi some chances. That's true. Yeah, you you uh, you bring the king in to, to support the a pawn, I guess, or something. Ah, that's All right. So that's a tough one. Yeah, so this one is just going to be a draw, but yeah, let's point that out real quick again. I think this this was a chance for Yu and Yi. It doesn't really seem like White should be risking anything here. I don't know if White has realistic winning chances. Perhaps not, because the bishop stops the pawn. Uh, the king stops this pawn. But, you know, may, maybe this, this could have still offered him some chances. Yeah, I mean, also, I guess early on, um, he's only down by a game, so he's probably not in panic mode yet. But that, that line you gave... Later on in that match, got to take those th those chances, as we mentioned. Not going to get too many really good positions against Hikaru. At least I don't expect it. So he's probably a bit disappointed, but early days. And I was just about to say, like, why hasn't this game ended in a draw yet? But it is the SEC. There is that match clock that we see taking down. And perhaps Hikaru just wants to bleed the clock as much as possible. Uh, give Yu Yang Yi the least chances to ever make a comeback. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Hikaru is a very comfortable favorite in this five-minute portion, but um, that advantage will only increase in the three-minute three, three minute or one-minute portion, so it's in his interest, I guess, to just, like, <laughs> repeat moves, um, shorten shorten the format. And it probably frustrates exactly. opponents. Like, I mean, some some players just don't like repeating moves a million times. They just, you know, they want the draw to happen right there. And there you go, Hikaru... <laughs> Uh, prolongs it with that pawn move. Exactly. Yeah. The one thing he has to be careful of when he put his king on a fade is not to allow White's king to come up to g6. Is then I don't really see how you're pushing. But Yu Yang Yi goes h4, h5. That actually only makes the game less longer. Uh, while there's no way at all for for White to win. Okay. Now we just have to wait for the 50 move rule to kick in. Hikaru is just gonna put his bishop yep. on any <laughs> dark square on the board until Chesakon will say it's a draw. You can criticize it, but it is smart if you favor yourself in the other time controls. Even shaving a minute uh, off of the game clock might, you know, be very important in the end. So, um, I think I think Hikaru's happy with this <laughs> this part. Yeah, for sure. And how much time has he already shaved off the clock? Like, I, it's definitely over a minute. I think we're definitely close to to two. Yeah, no, I mean, I think I think Yu Yang is good at like milking some some slightly better positions, and this was an example. Like he was pressing this game, and he was like, you know, let's get rid of this format. I'll take the draws where I can, and punish him. Punish him when it gets to the three minute aspect. All right, now Yu Yang Yi is moving his king over, but I don't think he can ever really do anything. I think for Yu Yang Yi, you just have to accept the fact that this is just a draw. There's nothing to do. He cars bishop on b2, guards the f6 pawn, and upon an a3. So I think he should just move his king back to g4 and pre-move bishop e3 to e6. Those are two safe pre-moves because both of those squares are covered. And that way you get this game out of the way as quickly as possible. Well, do you think he's offered Hikaru a draw through the game? controls it's a good some question. players would have I... pressed the draw button by now and then the question is who's offering the draw and who's declining the draw this is a psychological battle you never want to be the one to admit draw right yeah but yeah this one is is definitely going to be a draw now players just moving back and forth he doesn't have to worry about a repetition 
as Yu Yingyi has moved his king around. Maybe now Hikaru is doing the math. When was the last pawn move? Let me check real quick. That happened on move... Yeah. Do you have... Oh, and there we have it. It finally kicked in. So Hikaru, before the 50 move roll kicked in, let his time run down to his last couple of seconds and now opens up game three with A4, Eric. Yeah, I mean, uh, trying to throw Yu Yangi off. But just to reiterate for, for viewers who are wondering, why was Hikaru doing that? They're playing 90 minutes of this five minute time control, then it switches to three minutes and then one minute. And Hikaru, by prolonging these games, just means there's fewer games that are going to be played in that 90 minute 5-1 uh, segment. Right, and we have a bit of a peered setup reverse where White has gotten in this C3 and B4 push. Generally something you're pretty happy with and something that Black often prevents with A5. Now Knight of D2, another an orthodox maneuver by Hikaru. Where do you think he's headed with this Knight? I think he's just going to play you know, E4 at some point, get some sort of fighting, fighting position with, with, with tension. Mm-hmm. Bishop g4 by Yu Yi, putting the bishop on a tribe. He's making it difficult for White to now get that e4 push in. Maybe Koro is going to develop with a move like knight a3. I definitely like Yu Yi's position, and he's got to realize that even with black, he's going to get chances, and if he wants a real shot in this match, he's, he's going to take his chances, especially in the 5 plus 1 portion. Yeah, Hikaru, with this opening choice, is, is clearly saying he's not trying to play the best best openings, and he just wants, wants a position, because black should be very happy with with the development in the center here and and let's see yeah Yu Yang Yi is going to going to pressure try to take advantage of this uh just open open position I'd... I, see B5 I think Hikaru is still still feeling 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 his opponent uh out right he's trying to see how much risk he can take in the opening how much yeah. he can mess around uh, C4 expanding in the center, nice move. Now that now that he's had this pawn on B5, he already has pressure on the pawn on C6. So let's see what he's going to do here. Maybe move like Bishop A3. You have less space for White, so it makes sense to trade off some pieces. I think for Yu Yang Yi, he just has to become a little bit more comfortable with playing Hikaru. I mean, of course, he can be a bit scary, so to speak. He's this uh, online beast and blitz and bullet. But, you know, you just have to play the game. You That's how you give yourself the best chance. And as we see, he's messing around in the opening, so you have to try to punish him for that. Yeah, I mean, Hikaru is really asking for you know Black to play something like d4. But uh, curious, do you consider Hikaru the favorite uh, or Magnus in the SEC uh, groups or Ferruja? Who do you consider in the announced uh, you know player list the, the favorite this year? Yeah, very good question. I mean, given the fact that Hikaru won last year, he also beat Magnus in the Bullet Chess Championship. I'm leaning towards Hikaru, but it's it's never easy to say against uh, against Magnus. Well, what is your take, uh, uh, Eric? Yeah, I consider it probably close to to a 50-50. Recent results, Hikaru's got uh, a bit of an edge, but um, the the matches are always so close. So, I, but I do consider you know Hikaru just in previous years before last year I would have considered Magnus maybe a slight favorite, but after this year's results in the Bull Chess Championships and and last year's SEC. I think he's right up there, and it's pretty much neck and neck. Yeah, no, for sure. And I like what Yu Yang Yi is doing here, infiltrating these weakened dark stars with his bishop and his knight. We see Kaur pushing the bishop back with g4. Yu Yang Yi was threatening a little trick with knight takes d3 with the bishop over here, pinning that e2 pawn. But this weakens White's king set a little bit. And Eric, I think Yu Yang Yi is becoming more and more comfortable in this match as he's up 40 seconds. Yeah, this is this is a great position for Black. So it's gonna if you can manage the clock there and he's looking for some breakthrough. I, I don't know if that's gonna be pawn to e4, but Black has a space space advantage now. It's clear and you know some some uh, well placed pieces like this knight on c5. So this is this is very promising for for Yu Yang. We see the move knight b1 by Karo to trade off this bishop on a3. E4 now by Yu Yang Yi, breaking open a center. Yeah. I like this position a lot. I mean, after a trade, this knight is threatening to jump into c3. Hikaru might have to trade all of the knights off, but then he's stuck with this uh, weakened king side over here. Knight b1 also possible, but Yu Yang Yi right now has a free hand on the king side, and he can go for moves like h5. Yeah, no, this 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 is a position. Hikaru's, you know, played knight b1. 
with no hesitation, it's one of those positions where you know you're much worse as white and you're just going to try to blockade and, and survive on the king's side. Let your opponent uh, figure out how to proceed. Yeah, but that's the impressive thing about Ikari. He has no problem making moves like knight b1. No. I think a lot of chess players would really hate to make such a move. He goes queen b3. Yeah. All right, he's maybe aiming to swing that queen over to the king. So with someone like queen f3. This is definitely Yu Yang Yi's game to win. If he doesn't win this one, it's just going to be really tough. I mean, he's got a much better position with black. He's up on the clock. Uh, he's got a little bit of practice now. So let's see how he will try to put this one away. What do you recommend here? You think black should try to gang up on the e2 pawn or play another move you suggested earlier, h5? Um, sometimes trying to beat Hikaru is already the first mistake, meaning like I have a position that I really like. I spent all my time trying to find the win instead of maybe slowly building up the position. So I think I think there's a couple. You can go for the kill here or you can try to maybe build up on the e-file, double rooks, target this e2 pawn without spending too many resources. Yeah, and no, that's a tough thing about Hikaru. Like, he gets sometimes pushed to the edge quite... Well, not easily, but that does happen. He gets pushed to the edge. But it's very difficult to push him over the edge. He, he might get a very ugly position. But then he f starts finding w one best move after the other. And it's just very difficult to put him away. So I think you made a very good point. Sometimes it's just better to slowly but surely continue to improve the position. Because even though after a move like e3, it feels like there might be something for black, but there probably isn't. So I guess he should just slowly but surely increase the pressure with moves like h5. Yeah, yeah, h5 or rook e7. e3 is such a provocative move from, from Ikaru. He's really asking black to, to look at playing pawn to d3 which is maybe what Yu Yang Yi is spending a bunch of time on. But uh, yeah, I, I vote for, for H5 or Rook E7 just to, just to bring more pieces in. All right, so let's see what Yu Yang Yi is going to do. H5 looks very tempting. Knight G5 perhaps an option as well to threaten to go into F3 or Bishop E4, trade off those bishops. I think taking on E3, he goes B6. Now, that does slowly improve the position. But it looks a little bit timid to me. So let's see how Hikaru is going to try to crawl out of this. Maybe move like Rook to E1. So he's a little better prepared when the e file opens up. Yeah, I mean, White's position looks awful. But uh, Rook E1 or Rook D1, you have to just not blunder and let Black figure out what to do. If people are like, I mean, this kind of position we're seeing right now, I expect to see a few more times in the match. Yang, he's a very good player and very capable of getting good slowly you know slightly better positions or in this case much better um it's just whether he's going to be able to finish off Yukaru from those uh from those good positions that's what i'm curious about because definitely going to get good positions throughout this match you yeah, know for sure we see the move rook d8 a nice solid improving move and now Hikaru is thinking he's avoided the worst but it's it's not easy for him to make moves here his position is it's just bad like it's difficult to 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 make a good move here for white uh he goes f4 he's really asking for you you need to play move like knight g3 is he gonna do it black can also take over here on e3 but definitely a super provocative move here by karu i mean it looks like it should be losing i'm just trying to find what move that is is knight g3 rook f3 the idea um but this should be bad just uh can can black refute it and knight g3 by Yu Yang Yi on the board. Maybe he wants to follow up with queen h4, eyeing the rook on e1. Hikaru might have some ideas like f5, but that should backfire. So let's see what he's going to do. He goes rook f3. Hmm. All right. Queen h4 now. Is your idea after f5 is just black can play knight takes f5, for example? Or... That should be winning, but I don't see the win exactly. So takes, takes. Okay, yeah. Hikaru goes king h2. Now you could just move the knight back, attacking the rook on, on e1. It feels like there should be something here for black, but I don't see the knockout punch just yet. Yeah, it feels like there's something, but the good thing is black is still up on time. So it didn't burn all, all of his time looking for the win. So as, as you mentioned, like black can just retreat with knight e4 and ask Hikaru another question. Where What are you going to do about that rook on e1? I think he's going to have to move it. I think he should probably move it to someone like e1 or d1. That's when he goes for knight f2 now, taking the rook and knight takes g4. That should be game. Yes. Should. Seize it right away. Okay, so knight takes 
Knight takes g4 check. Hikaru's planning king g1. And then right. there's a bunch of options there. To me, rook takes c3 looks really good. In case you take the rook, there's queen f2, followed by knight takes c3. That's, that's light. That's light out. Yes. He could also go rook takes e3 right away. Right he away. goes bishop h7. He's still winning, but he missed an opportunity there to finish the game off right away. Now, I guess you just take the rook and take on d4. That looks completely crushing, but he's down to 17 seconds. Yeah, I mean, black was up on time there. That was where Hikaru was like, I'm just going to play quickly. I know I'm going to lose material and hope to get some chances here. But... Uh... I like the technique I'm seeing here, Benjamin. This is, uh, looks like Black knows with Queen F2 preparing like Rookie 2 or Rookie 1. I mean, um, even with 17 or, or 12 seconds, Black, Black knows how to, how to finish this game off. Yeah, Queen F2, a nice move by Yu Yi. 17 seconds, not the most time in the world. I think the one thing is though, is that you want to get this Bishop into the game somehow. So maybe with a well-timed G6, eight seconds, Knight c3, Hikaru fighting back, but it's a lot of material. He's down in exchange and upon him. Maybe Yu Yang Yi can also bring that bishop back into the game with f6, followed by bishop g8, and there he goes. Yeah. Uh, but here comes Hikaru in three tricks. seconds. Rook e2, rook e2. He's complete. Rook d2, nice move. Can you take... No, bishop d5 is there. And bishop d5. The bishop d5, bishop d5. Because rook takes g2, you lose a lot of material. Wait, no, this is over. This is over. There's no yeah. move for white. Bishop d5, uh, intermezzo is, is nasty. Yeah, you're going down a full piece here, and black is keeping the queens. Uh, rook d3, he takes, and move. Uh, rook e3, he hung the game. Rook e3. Rook e2, and you take Because then the, takes and b7. Oh, my but, goodness. Oh, my goodness. But does Hikaru yeah, he see Karu that? Hikaru lost on time. He Hikaru lost some time. That's what it said. The Eric, the one time he had a good position in this game, he flashed. Yes. You don't make this up. Like, usually it's the other way around. But Hikaru lost his game on time. The one time he had a winning position. Well, the, the question is, does he know that? Because if you know that, you're going to be a bit more bothered. But if he just lost on time, thinking he's lost, maybe, maybe in, in his head everything is okay. Yeah, maybe he thought like, other oh, position is lost anyway, I'm yeah. just going to let my time run out. But actually, in that last position, it seemed like he was completely winning after rookie three. But maybe he had already mentally given up. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if he, he found out. But uh, as we're looking at the camera now, it looks like he's thinking about a previous game. Maybe maybe he's just realizing that he had rookie three and rook takes, rook takes e4 in that position. Anyways, Benjamin, we got a tied, tied match, three games. Some people were predicting a total blowout, and, you know, based on the positions we've seen, we are going to see, you know, very competitive games. Yeah, and I'm happy for Yu Yi that he won that game. He fully deserved to win that one. Uh, he's got a nice position here with the white piece. The move A5 looks completely off for Hikaru. I think he's messing around a little bit too much. Like, A6 isn't too bad, because A6 still is quite a useful move in a lot of positions, but here it really has permanently weakened that B5 square. Yu Yang Yi has a bit of a free hand here on the king side. That being said, black is always super solid in these Karakan type of positions. And it's not that easy for white to build up a, a meaningful attack. Yeah, I mean, no matter what, black's going to be very solid. Maybe reroute a knight to d6, play play some standard moves. I think Yang Yi, by playing queen, queen g5, you know, signaling, he's probably going to attack a little bit here and, and, and play, I don't know, pawn h4, h5 and, and gain some squares. I think that's the right way to handle this. I mean, you have to put Hikaru under pressure. You, you got to give him some tough, tough choices, throw him off his game, um, and you know, build on that previous, previous win. Yeah, no, for sure. And we were saying earlier that against Hikaru, the one thing you have to avoid is still you cannot be frustrated by earlier losses. Do you think maybe Hikaru is a little bit frustrated? We see him still looking to the side a little bit. Maybe do you think that last game is still in his head? I, I mean, he's been here so many times that I generally assume, you know, if he loses a game or it's a bad start, he has he has enough experience and he's you know played enough of these matches that that he realizes there's there's momentum and and uh, you're gonna have your your game or two that that you wish, you know, these bad losses that you wish you didn't have. So I, I I assume he's okay after one loss, but 
if uh, if it continues to be a tied match, then then that's definitely reason for concern. Yeah, and already in this game, he's going down fi uh, a minute on the clock. I think here this move a5 is really haunting him because it's going to be more or less impossible for black to ever create any counterplay on the king side. He goes f5, kicking the queen away, but permanently weakening that pawn on e6, yeah. which gives white a very clear target with rookie 3 and rookie 1. I mean, yeah, this looks, this e6 pawn looks like it's, it's good. You're going to get tortured for it, but Hikaru is doing it. He's got something in mind. I don't know if that's knight c8 or something, but how's, how's black going to deal with e6 pawn weakness? I think he aims to defend it with, okay, there we have it with rook f6. All right, so white's got a clear edge here, but not, an, it's not very obvious to me how you're going to improve. It should be I was just about to say, I like bishop b5, maybe followed by knight d3 to c5 or f4. We see h3 by Yu Yi, uh, a slow improving move. This is this is a terrible position for, for Hikaru. And I don't entirely understand why he played f5. I mean, if why that was forced, but these kind of positions, Yu Yi is going to be thrilled with, you know, just two result game. White's playing for, you know, uh, to try to win, but uh, without much risk. Uh, since the only open file is the semi-open e-file. Right, queen c7, a nice move though by Hikaru. Now he could trade off the knights on e5. That wasn't possible on the previous move, as why could recapture the pawn and create a fork. Bishop e5, I think one move too late. Now Hikaru can take, and after rook takes, you have to move knight g6, attacking the rook. Very tricky. And if you take yes. an e6, there's knight f4. So... That's how Hikaru can crawl back into this game. I think with one pair of knights off the board, it's not as bad for black, because it's going to be very difficult to increase the pressure on e6. Yeah, this knight g6 resource is, is super important, because it just doesn't let white gang up on the e6 pawn in, in time. So, rook e3, knight f4. Hikaru's an active defender, and he thrives when there's active defense, and getting this knight in the game is definitely... Um, part of that agenda you don't want to have to move make moves like knight d8 or knight f8 or something i was thinking That's after queen f3 here maybe even g5 just uh wow, so i don't know if that's crazy but yeah it definitely makes sense why would love to kick that knight away on f4 so if i could play h4 followed by g3 the knight's gonna have to go so with g5 you prevent that he goes queen d6 defending the pawn on e6 further a little bit more so let's see what Yu Yang Yi is going to do here. H4 makes sense to me, uh, followed, by, followed by G3. Is that being said, though, if you go G3, you're really asking for black to go F4 at some point. So you might want to be a little bit careful with that. Yeah, I'm not sure I, uh, how much I like white's position. If, I, if there's a good way to get rid of that knight on, on F4, I would say so. But H4 and G3 does look like it's weakening the king side too. So, yeah. And he I would be worried about getting my queen trapped. Five. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, perhaps a move like g4 is on the card. So let's see what Yu Yang Yi is going to do here. Is he going to trade himself? It feels like black is more likely to take advantage of that open h file. You can also go g3 here. But then Hikaru might have some ideas like knight h3 followed by g4 and f4. It definitely feels like what Hikaru is doing is very provocative. Just like in the last game, he pushed up those g and h pawns and that backfired uh, tremendously so let's see if you, you mm -hmm. can punish him again yeah in this game um car is building a pretty comfortable time advantage as well so i'm playing white here i'm looking for ways to get the queens off based on the clock situation based on this night uh improving itself i would i would be looking for an end game if i was you and you choose you do not want you know, to have 20 30 seconds and fit you know face like an h file uh battery Exactly, and I don't like what he's done here, Eric. He traded on g5 and played bishop to f1. Now he can continue with a move like g4, or like you said, king g7, followed by rook h8 and rook h6. And I think it's much more likely that black is going to do some damage here on the h5. I don't really see why Yuing Yi was so eager to trade on g5. Yeah, just to play g3. I guess g3, and then that's the next move no matter what for, for white. Try to attack e6. But Hikaru could go for g4 himself. Then you have to move your queen either to g3, and you can no longer play g3, or you go queen d1. But after queen d1, maybe Hikaru can go for something like rook h6, threatening moves like knight e2. 
and after g3 maybe then you move the knight and you want to break through to move like f4 eventually i think yeah yeah i think Hikaru was thinking about how much is he going to try to press this position you know how much risk is he willing to take right now black's got this weakness on e6 but it might be manageable uh but if you go any you know play any riskier then then he's then he's all in yeah, and g4 by Hikaru. Eric, we were saying earlier how the position was in Yu Yi's favor, but Hikaru had the edge on the clock. Now it's the other way around. Hikaru is doing completely fine here, but Yu Ying Yi up a little bit of time. And he goes back to d1. So let's see what Hikaru will do here. I like the idea of moving the king up and doubling on the h file. Yeah, I mean, the king g7, rook h8, that's just going for checkmate. I think Yang is really banking on playing c4 or something here to target uh, the e6 pawn because if you don't do it now then black is very very fast when it comes to the h file yeah it goes yeah. king of rook seven eight. nice move defending the pawn on e6 and now can you already go rook h8 he goes queen c7 i think like i said yu yu has tried to create counterplay as quickly as possible with a move like c4 but rook h8 and then even the knight can go back to f8 if you ever need to and and black can reroute the pieces and just just double up on the h file i think maybe maybe white saying look i'm just gonna go g3 bishop g2 and even with the h file there's no no checkmate but, but there's uh, also f4 coming yeah i would be very scared would... i'd be very scared if i was playing white yeah so he goes queen c5 trying to get the queens off but eric honestly the end game also looks bad for black for white in case like trades goes f4 the spawn on c5 is weak and black's got a massive pawn set and even there I can go, let's say, 97, double up the rooks. And with these pawns over here, it's very easy to get checkmate. Because if you go g3, black goes f3. And if you go f3, black goes g3. So let's see what Ikaru will do. Is he going to trade the queens or keep the queens on the board? Yeah, queen c5 looks pretty desperate to mess up the pawns like that. But uh, white really does not want to play this position with queens on the board. Just uh, those mating threats on the on the each file. Mm -hmm. So queen b8. I like this from from Yu Yang Yi here. I mean, um, if there's a checkmate for white, uh, I mean for black to, to go for, you know, he's like saying prove it. But crashing through in the center, maybe rook b3 here. Is this uh, is this losing? And 97 instantly by Hikaru. Apparently that's a bad move. Apparently you should have played f3, locking down a king. So then you only need to get this rook over to h6. After 97, maybe White can take on d5. Rookie 5 by Yu Yang Yi. Rookie 5. Blocking that queen. Huh, but what is his idea after f3? Like, how do you stop yourself from getting checkmated after rook h6? I did not look that far, but uh, that's a very good question. So rook h6. Pawn takes e6, king up. And are there, There's are there any nothing. more checks? You just no, rook f5, just, just sacrificing the, the rook. But here's the problem, Eric. After pawn takes g2, you're not only losing the bishop. After rook h1, black's turning mate. So you have to give up this rook. It's completely over. And Ikaru takes the lead again. Yeah, no, that... Uh, you give Ikaru a position like that, where you can use the h-file, that happens so quickly. It's, once he has the initiative, that's, uh, that's all she wrote. Yeah, this one definitely felt like a pity for Yu Yang Yi. He certainly had his chances. I think it all it all started going wrong, Eric, when he allowed the trade of knight trade of knights. I think he should have kept one pair of knights on the board. There, he definitely would have kept an advantage. But after that, it was all Hikaru who managed to get a kingside attack going. Yeah, like looking at that position, I don't even know. I thought White was playing natural moves, solid, everything was good, and then just by not doing anything, Hikaru just slowly got this H file, tried it open, came up with a mating net. But it's hard for me to even criticize what Yu Yang Yi was doing there. I mean, with a minute, two minutes on the clock, I don't know how easy it is to just formulate uh, an attack at a you know formulate a plan and come up with an attack out of nothing. I just. He's missed something there, but he's probably wondering what. Yeah, no, for sure. Definitely, so we see that Hikaru, Hikaru has a one-point lead 
right now. It definitely, it definitely not a bad start for Yu Young Yi, but given the fact, given the positions he had on the board, it certainly feels like he could have done better. But with all that being said, we are going on a very short break, but do not go anywhere. We will be right back with more Speed Chess Championship presented by Coinbase. Become Chessable's next best-selling author. Enter the 2023 Create Your Own Course Challenge and earn a shot at $5,000. Here's your chance to bring that course in you to life. Share your passion for chess on an international scale and bank while doing it. Zero course creation experience? No problem. Grandmaster Maurice Ashley will show you the contest mechanics. Then our team will guide you through the publishing process, step by step, like we've done for over 250 authors. And best of all, the winner will have their course presented by Grandmaster Maurice Ashley himself. Visit chessable.com slash create to join. Welcome everyone. We are here with Judith Polgar, the legendary chess player, one of the greatest chess players of all time. And I went my next move. I said, no, I'm not moving my queen. I'm not moving my bishop. But actually, I'm going to give checkmate or winning great material. And I went knight e3. It works only that way. If you're an attacker, you sacrifice something, go all the way until the end. Don't chicken out in the meantime at some point. Because many times there is a point there is no way back. It's only forward. How is it to play with Kasparo? When you saw him personally, he really had this incredible energy. Judith, thank you so much for being with us, and I hope you're, hope you're ready to, to dive into the past with us. Oh, absolutely. I'm very happy to share with you some of my most memorable games. Championships presented by Coinbase. Today's matchup, Hikaru Nakamura, he's facing Yu Yang Yi and uh, Benjamin. Yu Yang Yi had to win a qualifier to get here. Can you take a look at his run? Yeah, and he had a very tough run to get here. He got through some players like Gadakomsky, Jocelyn, Bogdan Dejak. So very impressive to make it here in the first place. He's having a tough matchup. 
But let's hope that he can uh, flip this one run. And he also beat uh, Fashkes, as we uh, see right here, Eric. Yeah, no, I mean, every, every qualifier was stacked. And, I mean, the only issue that he's facing is he's facing Hikaru Nakamura, who is just so consistent. I mean, it almost reminds me of tennis, where year after year, like, Hikaru just not, never gets upset in the early rounds of the SEC. It just doesn't happen. Um, I don't think I've ever seen it. So that's that's the uphill battle. A lot of the top players are capable of being upset. But Hikaru, his online speed chess record definitely speaks for itself. Um, he does really, really well in this format. Exactly, yeah. And I think Yu Yang Yi has to shake off a bit of rust. He's getting chances in these games with white, with black. He just has to take them. He He's won a game, but even that one, he let it, it slip away for a second. So let's hope that he will go into the next couple of games with a little bit more confidence. And what do you think, Eric? Is Hikaru just going to keep fooling around with moves like A3 and A4? I mean, for the time being, maybe. Uh, I think if if you're looking at the positions and you're Yu Yi, you're pretty happy. And you're just trying to improve a couple of things to, to change the result. Uh, Hikaru, it just depends how he's feeling. If he feels like it's still okay to take some risks, he might be like, you know what, I'm going to keep frustrating my opponent, giving him playable positions. Um, he seems pretty relaxed, so I'm not sure anything's going to change. Mm -hmm. And Yu Yang Yi going here for a bit of a sloth setup, bring the bishop out to f5, not f3 by Hikaru. I guess he's just going to castle, maybe a potential c6. A pretty solid position for black. I think either Shai can be happy about the outcome of the opening. But b4 already is a, is a better move than something like a4. I think with moves like a4, you're really just, you know, throwing a move away. A4 doesn't really do anything for Y, but, but B4 and A3 at least has some merit to it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Hikaru is just not being very confrontational uh, with, with most of his openings and letting, um, letting Yu Yang Yi pick whatever setup uh, he wants. And I think Hikaru is just waiting for that to, to figure out how he's going to act. Um, but uh, yeah, some very easy to play openings here i think Hikaru definitely plays i mean it just depends on the opponent and Yu Yang Yi, who, who's like you know there's some players that even in blitz they're playing pretty pretty aggressively playing sharp lines Yu Yang Yi, very solid and it really depends on the opponent to see how Hikaru is going to play and here he'd rather just have some longer slow games and just try to outmaneuver and out chance i think Yu Yang Yi when the games get a little deeper for sure, yeah, we see the move knight f4 by Kaur. Perhaps he's aiming for this knight c5 jump. Uh, that would change up the structure a little bit. Bishop h7 by Yu Yang Yi. A pretty solid waiting move. Queen b3 by Karu. And already, you know, even though black should be doing quite fine here, it's not that easy to see what exactly black is going to do. They've got all of their pieces developed. Maybe something like bishop d6 followed by queen e7. Slightly improving the position. But I'm starting to like Ikaru's position a little bit uh, more. But Eric, uh, it's it's kind of, it's not shocking that in the first round Hikaru is playing around a little bit with a3, a4, b4. In the next round he could potentially face Fabiano Caruana. Do you think he would go for a similar approach? Or do you think he's going to take the opening a little bit more serious in that match? I think a little bit more seriously. I mean, I uh, don't want to count out this match yet, but um, Fabiano's improved a lot when it comes to, to, to speed chess. And I just don't think Hikaru... Um, will feel like the, the risk is worth it against against somebody of that caliber. Right. So so do you feel like also he's using this first matchup to sort of see how much risk he can take, like how how, how much he can mess around? Yeah, definitely might be a bit of a warm-up match and, and trying out maybe some, some systems or positions he's hoping to, to use in, in other matches. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a very good litmus test. First matchup, Yu Yang Yi. Um, not known to be the most dangerous opponent, but he won a qualifier to get here, and those qualifiers are absolutely stacked. So there's uh, there's definitely some clutch clutch potential with Yu Yang Yi's chess um, for him to even get here. It means you do have to you know be steady and, and eliminate some some of the top top online qualifiers. So he does have some some kick to his game, but uh, we've yet to see most of it. So let's see, we see the move 97 here by Yu Yi aiming to trade off the knights. I think a good move. 
Uh, however, in case you take on c5, white isn't too unhappy with that. They can recapture the b pawn. And then you always have pressure on that pawn on b7. So let's see how Hikaru is going to improve his position here. Maybe move like queen b2 or queen c3, eyeing that rook on e5. You're going to have to decide, are you going to keep the pawn on d3 or go d4 eventually? What do you think, Eric? Keep the pawn on d3 as long as possible. Um... I think if a lot of pieces get traded off, then you might play d4, but the risk now of playing an early d4 is maybe black plays rook g5 and uses the, some of the, the kingside squares for the for an initiative. I like your queen b2 move. Yeah. Pretty car goes for queen c3, eyeing that rook in e5. So right now he's threatening knight takes d7, followed by taking the rook. So Yuying is going to have to move it, I guess, to like e8. And then Hikaru can also use that d4 square for his knight or his queen. Yuying Yi going aggressive right away with that move that you mentioned earlier with rook g5. Yeah, I thought here maybe like queen d4 and maybe just bring the queen a little closer to the, the king side, maybe prepare f4. But I didn't expect rook g5 this early on. Looks like it can get chased around very easily already. Maybe pawn f4. Ikaru plays very calmly. He goes queen d4 first. Uh, moves like f4, definitely in the position. And yeah, not easy to see at all for you. You need to see how he could launch a king side attack. He's got this rook here, but that's really the only piece. It's very difficult to bring the queen in as well. So to me, the rook looks a little bit off. I would rather have it on e8 right now. But he goes bishop f5, perhaps setting up some ideas with bishop to h3. Yeah, I think Black's just looking for any counterplay on the king side because what Black's trying to avoid is taking on c5. I think knight takes c5, Hikaru's going to maybe take back with a b pawn and then hammer the b7 pawn. I think Black's looking for any distraction, any initiative on the on the king side to avoid just trading into a passive endgame. Exactly, and look at this move bishop f5, Eric. I think he, I think Yu Yang Yi would love to go bishop h3, and after bishop f3, he has rook takes g2, followed by... Queen. Oh wait, actually, Rook C two does <laughs> defend against that, <laughs> but uh, that would that is his idea. So yeah. let's see if he can put it to work. And for those of you who are wondering, we're playing still in the five plus one portion. And Eric, look at Ikaru's clock. He's going down to ninety seconds. Down uh, ninety seconds on the clock. What do you What do you think? Yeah, there's something there that he didn't like. So here, what happens after Bishop? h3 well now and you I can go, just go bishop f3 as there's no longer that queen g5 follow but and then you and then knight f5 okay yeah this is ah, something else yeah actually that one made a lot of sense you and you decided to trade i'm not a you i'm not a big fan because if you don't see a direct follow-up hikaru can double up on the b file and put a lot of pressure on b7 yeah i don't know why you and you went for this unless you see something concrete here because this end game when white doubles on the e file doesn't look good at all. I guess he's going to go right. rook c7 and... Yeah, k bishop h3, king h1. Seems like the stream just died, so let's hope we'll be back soon. Uh, rook b1 by Karu. Wait. Oh, it's just us here? Okay. I th think so, yeah. I don't... Yeah, I don't see us on the... Just the com channel. Okay. So all right. So sorry, we're double checking, but we are we are still live. Yeah, here. I mean, we thought the uh, B file would be would be uh, a problem, but Yang Yi is just playing Bishop C eight and arguing going to keep that bishop there uh, the entire time, and what's white going to do about that? I mean, bishop on c, it's very hard to target. Right, so, yeah, the bishop, the white's got a lot of pressure on the pawn on b7. Black has to go passive with moves like bishop to c8, but it's very difficult to see how he's going to further increase the pressure. Now, maybe Yu Ying Yi can use both rooks on the king side with rook e6 to f6, to cook up some counterplay. Hikaru also look at his clock. He's down to 40 seconds, which is very unusual. Usually he's the one putting pressure on the clock. And he goes for the move queen to d6. I think a queen trade would be in his favor as then he can potentially try to dislodge Black's position with a potential d7 push. Yeah, I'm wondering what Hikaru spent all his time looking at. 
Um, because, I mean, the position position for White isn't so bad. Maybe there's just something that's bothering him about it. But, uh, and yeah, going for this timely queen trade before Black can maybe build up a bigger initiative on the king side. Mm -hmm. So let's see how Yung Yi is going to deal with this one. He's got the edge on the clock. I think he just has to keep moving here, keep the tension on Ikaru. Maybe Queen E8 or Queen F8. I think it it is probably bad to trade the queens. I don't see exactly uh, why right away, but it, it feels like there's got to be something for white. Yeah, I, I think black not trading queens is correct. Allowing allowing this pawn to get to d6 and, and maybe some, some b, b7 tactic. That didn't seem uh, necessary. Queen b8 by Hikaru, further infiltrating in black's position, g6 by Yu Yun Yi, a solid move, but this rook on g5 now might be lacking some squares, so let's see what Hikaru is going to do, he's down to 20 seconds. What I'm curious about, I was just about to say, can white push the h-pawn, or, or is he worried that it's going to weaken the, the king side a bit? Because yeah, you could, definitely there's an argument to be made here, white's got all these pawns in dark squares, black stuck with his passive bishop on c8, Hikaru might want to Figure out a way to trade off the light squared bishops and then gain full access to the um, b7 square. So he's moved his bishop back to h3, but maybe now you I think rookie four some... is rookie four coming. Okay, rook f6. I, I like that. Yeah, he goes rook f6, king g7. If black gets a time here, I think you would love to get in g5, and there he goes g5, followed by f4. And this queen on b8 is still eyeing the king, so but it's very far yeah. away, and he covered down to eight seconds. That's a tricky move, right? Queen takes pawn, then queen takes c8, and I think white wins the race. Dukaru's setting some bait there. But, uh... Oh. Yeah. What happens after rook e6? Or rook here? Is there a repetition? Right, so Yu Yang Yi can take the repetition here, but I think he really shouldn't... It's 30 take seconds to 9. Gotta, gotta figure out... Try how, yeah, exactly. 30 seconds to 9. You gotta take the chances you can get here. Rook f7. I think rook e7 is queen already a draw. Isn't queen e6? And it's... Yeah, that's definitely a missed opportunity by Yu Yang. He's up 20 seconds on the clock. He's got a good position. And you gotta take those chances. You're not gonna get those in every game. I think so. I think so. I mean, being down by, by a game is still not, yeah, uh, anything to, to worry about. But Hikaru clearly isn't very comfortable. When you see Hikaru down to 7 seconds or 10 seconds, Hikaru is such a consistently... Fast player usually means there's some level of, uh, you know discomfort in the position, and that position wasn't that easy for White to play. So probably would have mm -hmm. played on, but I also wouldn't have gotten such a decent position in the first place as uh, Yang Yi has been getting. Exactly, and we saw a very slight head shake there by uh, by Yu Yang Yi. Perhaps he didn't realize that it was already a threefold repetition after Queen to D6. But uh, yeah, definitely a big missed opportunity. That being said, it wasn't very clear though how he should have continued. And again, Eric, we have the four knights. Hikaru switching it up a little bit. We saw in the earlier game that he played the move d6. That allowed Yu Yang Yi to play knight e2. So he takes on c3 right away, not allowing White the opportunity to keep the knights on the board. And now he goes d6. So I think a very solid approach for Hikaru. Yu Yang Yi having the slightly more active position, but Hikaru having the slightly better pawn structure. Yeah, I mean, Hikaru is very comfortable playing with knights, so having this dynamic, two knights versus two bishops, I think black's what going to go move the queen out of the way, eventually free up the f-pawn for some f6 or f5, and I can, I think white has to be pretty pretty careful here um, to make sure that the black's f-file is contained. I guess yeah, this is a bit of a trick here, you know, knight h4, if h6, just take on e7 and play knight g6, nice little pin. Yep, that's a nice uh, point uh, there. Here, I can take and goes knight g6, and they go up the exchange. So, Hikaru moved this king out of the way first. Now, the question is can Yu Yang Yi go f4 here, or is his bishop just getting trapped after f6? He can also go for moves like queen h5, but then I think Hikaru might go for something like queen e8, followed by f6 anyway. Yeah, yeah, the queen e8 moves pretty annoying. Because you do want to play queen h5, you do want to bring the pieces in, you want to open up the uh, f file. Uh, get the bishops more active. Um, Black does have this queen e8 move, preparing f6. 
Yeah, so a typical Hikaru position here. This is also a little bit provocative, but this this position this position is actually fine for him, and that's why we see Yu Yang Yi burning a lot of time. He's probably looking at all of these ideas like f4, queen h5, looking for some sort of breakthrough, but it does not seem to be there. And he takes an e7 voluntarily. To me, Eric, that seems very unnecessary. I don't know why he would give the bishop parallel. I like think that. he just didn't know where he's gonna put the bishop after Black plays f6 next, and then maybe f5. So. Um, bit of a panic move, uh, I think we could say, but uh, didn't like where where that dark square bishop was, was was headed, and decided just to trade it off, you know, proactively. But now Hikaru's yes. position has to be probably pretty okay, right? I mean, once the bishop pair has been has been removed, I guess this is Ye Yu Yang Yi's idea. I get, I'm gonna get f4 in first. That means I'm gonna get this f file pressure, and try to play with the initiative a little bit there. Mm -hmm. At least it's so consistent. Yeah, so I'm a little bit surprised with the move Queen G6 by Hikor. It very easily allows White to go F4. And now, like I said, it feels like White has got a slight edge and very easy moves. He can now just recapture with the Rook, go Queen F3, Rook AF1. You never really mind this trade on B3 because it uh, it, it improves your pawn structure. So Yu Yang Yi having some easy moves here and it's not that easy for Hikor to deal with this pressure on the FL. Yeah, you don't want to trade as you just mentioned, but if you don't trade as black, you're looking at playing f6 at some point because that f-file pressure is going to be too much. So, some big decisions for Hikaru. He knows rook f1 is coming, and are you going to defend the f7 square? Very good question, yeah. No, I think maybe he's looking at a move like d5, although white just going up upon there, so mm -hmm. already it's very difficult to see what you're going to do. If you take on b3, then white can recapture with either pawn, followed by knight f5 and rook g4. That also looks too much. So uh, how are you defending the f7 pawn here? White is simply trying to take an e6, followed by rook takes f7. Hikaru's not getting positions that... Uh, I mean, he wants to be getting against Yu Yi. This is in his will house. I mean, white is just slightly better can push and you're not forcing your opponent to make tough decisions so it's probably a little frustrated i can't hear what he's saying but I, it wouldn't surprise me at all the car was very frustrated at himself right now if we're just kind of getting the the kind of positions that yeah he thrives in yeah and <laughs> talking about frustration i just looked at the camera we saw there the head shake out of disgust like yeah what what kind of position have i got myself into he goes d5, but here white is going up a pawn. It's impressive, though, that he does go for this pawn sacrifice, because if you don't, your position is just terrible. But here, there are still chances to hold. So let's see how he will try to survive here. Yeah, black's down one pawn. That's maybe not the end of the world, but f7 is also loose. I think uh, Hikaru's counting on uh, putting uh, some pressure on maybe white's isolated pawn. I don't know, maybe on e2 or something. Just... Just playing against some of the loose pawns in the position and being tricky. I don't think Hikaru went for this thinking there'd be full competition. He just preferred this kind of position than a very passive uh, position on the F file. Yeah, that seems to be the right decision. Queen A5, the pawn on A2 is weak, like you mentioned earlier. Now, Black is down a very clean pawn, but their king is no longer in danger. Uh, White's gonna perhaps have to make a passive move like Queen B2, and that's what Yu Yang Yi does. That being said, though, Eric, Yu Yang Yi is going to get full control over the only open yeah. file of the, on the board. You're going to have to make a move like b6. And after rook f1, it's very difficult to see what, what black is going to do. You, you can also go rook e7, maybe h3, make sure you never get background checkmated. So it's all Yu Yang Yi in this game. So let's see if he can put this one away. Yeah, I, I mean, the end games are all going to be good for white here. I think, I think knowing Hikaru, he's just going to be slippery with his one queen. But as you mentioned, outside of the queen... White controls the e-file, black is passive and, and down a pawn. So just not a, not a good recipe, you know, for, for, for counterplay. But as long as that queen is on d2 and harassing, I think being e still has to be pretty careful. He goes a3, slightly surprised by that one. It looks like a fine move, but for now, queen b4 is not possible as it hangs the pawn on c2. Because rook e2, now the queen swings back to g5. At some point, I would go h3, just making sure... You never get background check, back rank checkmate, but I like queen b5 as a queen trade would uh, work out pretty well for white. Yeah, h3 at any moment looks like a move to burn. Um, the question is, how is white planning to try to convert this? And maybe that's going to involve rook e7 and bring the queen over to g6 or something. 
Maybe rookie yep. seven. Yeah, rookie seven definitely looks like a nice move. I think if you can double up the rooks, it feels like white is, is getting close to winning. As then they're not only up a pawn, but also having a dominant position. But like you said earlier, Hikaru being annoying with that queen. And there he goes to f2. I'm not sure what the hesitation is for, for white in terms of certain moves. But I, I think Yu Yang is just like, he's not in a rush. I was saying maybe you should try to threaten checkmate as white. But the other argument is you can just slowly improve your pieces like this and attack some of black's pawns. Uh, maybe rook e6 here. Just a little worried about the end game if I'm playing white. How many pawns can I trade? Let's say rook e6, b5. Is that a good trade? Is that a bad trade? I was thinking it would be easier to go for checkmate sooner. Yeah, it feels like white's pawn structure slightly improves as then you have two connected passers. But blacks, the, the black rooks get active, so I think that's what you want to avoid. So after b5, maybe you take and go a5, although that a pawn can also turn into weakness. So I definitely like what Ikara has done here with the move rook b8 followed by b5. Yeah, I mean, I just don't feel like white is maximized having the e-file. I mean, I think the rook should be on e6 or, or e7 or e4. But he's going for that similar idea that you mentioned. Um, not taking on b5, playing a5. Maybe rook, rook a1 now. And uh, utilizing something. Rook, is rook e6 playable? Maybe that hangs c2. Right, so maybe These are the kind of positions Yu Yang Yi has to convert. If he has a chance this match. It's going to have to be these pawn up positions. You have to exactly. show Ikaru that he can't go just sacrifice a pawn. Uh, rookie one that move to me looks very odd i don't know what he's planning to do after rook a8 i mean to me c3 followed by d4 made a lot of sense as then you can also always go rook to a2 but here aren't you just losing your pawn after rook a8 um is planning some sort of queen f7 or just to sacrifice the i, I for rook a8 i guess you yang is planning something where you give up the pawn for counterplay all right, Hikaru's played b4, now perhaps just rook e4. Black can take the pawn on a5, but you'll win that b4 pawn uh, back right after. And then you still have the two connected passers. That being said though, Eric, might there be some queen a1, queen e5 business at the end? Perhaps because that you have to take the queen. Yeah. Yeah, black can trade into the rook end games, probably as you mentioned, two con you know the connected pass pawns. So Hikaru has to... Uh has to defend before can't go into the end game yet down upon in the end game you know four versus three a lot of those are drawn but this one would not be drawn because because those are connected pass pawns on but now wait does this allow hikaru can he take yeah he can just take and take on c2 at the end now, now on he's c2 completely and then fine Oof. Yeah, rook c4 queen f2 now Eric, this Queen one could is a very good move. Yes. This one could completely turn around. Rook g5 is also there. I mean, there's also the option that you could lose here. Yeah. No, Hikaru is... He, he's annoying with his queen. We, we thought it might happen, but uh, never allowed white to get into position where the, the, the past d-pawn or the past c-pawn could have been pushed. Just neutralize the, the structure very comfortably. So queen b3, Everything let's see if draw he... here. Yeah. Yeah, but Hikaru might even go for the win here. I mean, yeah, queen e2, there we have it. If you go queen b2, you hang the pawn, and otherwise you're going to allow rook a2, a and goes rook d1, queen e2 here. I think in a time scramble, you definitely would prefer to be black here. Yeah, well, white has the liabilities. I mean, this g2 pawn is going to get hit sometimes, and the, d pawn, the, the, the d3 pawn is loose as well. So Hikaru can definitely play this risk-free. Um, I think he just wants to, he's not expecting anything, but he knows it doesn't hurt to try. He bent, you know, he's, he's good at time scrambles, good at pre-moves, good at playing positions on, just tiring his opponent out or running down the clock. Suits him just Yeah, fine. exactly. Even if this game ends in a draw, he shaves another minute of the clock. There is two rookie five, rookie one. Okay, rookie five, he's going up a pawn here. It's probably still a dead draw, but hey... Looking where he came from, this is definitely progress for him. Yeah. Yeah, and he, he you know, takes away more time. Um, only Black can try to win this, so. Mm -hmm. 
The one thing you have... Wait, Queen E8, I think. Uh, Queen E3. Is there a way for Y to make a perpetual here? Or Yeah, it looks like it, looks like it should be close to a perpetual. Because how do you... You're going to lose H5. You have to go King F5. A King G6 now. No, wait, now he's wiggling out of it. King H6. He car keeps the game going. G5, good move. And you have ah, to be careful yes. not allow... Queen E5 is coming, yeah. Okay, G4. It's getting tricky with this G-pawn. Black has ideas to checkmate white and with the evil bar. Oh, that's a good check. Yeah, white's just check looking again. for perpetual here, but if Hikaru finesses his king properly, he might be safe on G3. King F2, maybe? I guess you, you just keep checking. Or, or G3 also seems fine, followed by King G2. That gives you a little bit more breathing room, but Yu Yang Yi just lost some time. He looks a bit confused there, Benjamin. I was just focused on the position. I was like, what's going on? But um, that's 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 a great win for Hikaru. I mean, that's what what can we say? Didn't, that's didn't a have to do very too much there. costly loss <laughs> for Yu Yang Yi. Like, he was up upon. Yeah, he either lacked or something, or 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 what happened? But he just yeah, he should yeah, have never lost that game. About. I mean, as you mentioned, there's ways to draw that position and, and uh, you just can't afford, against Hikari, you just can't afford any slip-ups. No, yeah, he, he should have won that game and a draw was already a pretty disappointing result, but to lose that one, it's really a little bit too much. Uh, here we have a pretty symmetrical, I don't know how to call this, a, a Kale system. Something like that. Black can just take on c5. The mm -hmm. position is just completely equal, but Hikaru doesn't mind. He just wants to, you know, play the game of chess and try to, you know, put pressure later on. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, like, Hikaru is very result-oriented. You know, he doesn't always have, like, the cleanest matches or the best positions, but his goal, you know, the pressure he puts on his opponents, that it, it, it wears you down. So, um, even the positions he's getting from the opening, like, I wouldn't say any of them are, like, really special, but been able to outplay Yu Yang Yi in the late stages of almost every game and that's why he's uh, up 4-2. Um, just had just been steadier throughout uh, throughout the first part of the match so far. Right and we're getting word from one of Hikaru's mods that Hikaru wants to play every first possible move in this match. So I guess that's why he started with a3 then a4 then b4 then b3. So I guess after this it's going to be c3 then c4 d3 d4 and I guess at the end, maybe even knight e3 and knight h3. So he's, uh, yeah, definitely using this 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 match as a warm up or to mess around with. How would you feel, uh, Benjamin, if uh, your opponent was was playing you in a match, but they also had a side quest to try all these different first moves? Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's definitely a little bit annoying if he's just <laughs> messing around with you like that, and you cannot win. I mean, he you young he has won a game right but it feels like he should be on a, on a better score so I, I would definitely be a little bit uh, frustrated however with black hikaru has stopped messing around now he's just playing e4 e5 but maybe in the bullet you know he's uh yeah he's gonna uh, play moves like b5 or a6 again on the first move i like white's position here already i mean i expect he's gonna maybe just take on c6 and play king e2 but um very easy to play for white and just Small pressure against the weakness on c6. Rook yeah, here c1. white just has a, has a pretty c1. solid edge. Yeah. Just move one of the rooks to, to c1. You have pressure on the c6 pawn. a5 makes sense though from black. Black would love to trade off their weakness for the pawn on b3 or go bishop to a6. But yeah, here we actually have a game where Ricardo has a pretty solid edge out of the opening. Yeah, and like Yu Yang Yi, I mean, we're looking at the match, it's 4 2. His style, he's very consistent. I don't expect him to really change anything. So what we're seeing now, I mean, he's going to try to improve maybe his play here and there. But in terms of opening approach or even just general approach, he, he's a solid player. He's going to play these positions even if he needs to win. Um, he'll still be playing some like slot positions or, or, or Queen's Gambit. Um, he's gotten to, to his current level by, by being very consistent with his chess style. So... I don't expect uh, any any adjustments there. Besides that, he's telling himself, "Look, I gotta, I gotta improve my play 
uh, in these in these end games in these middle games. Yeah, I think I he's just a little bit to too hesitant. Favorite. Yeah, I don't like, expect him to be a favorite if he if he switches up against Hikaru. He's gotten good. He has to trust the positions he's been getting and just trust that he's gonna convert at a higher percentage. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, I think his his overall style of play is is completely fine. In this game, he's got a slightly worse position, but again, I think it's just a little bit too hesitant. We saw in that last game, he got a very clean extra pawn, but then why not just go rookie seven, improve the rooks, increase the pressure on black? He was moving around without a real plan, and then he car was able to create enough compensation, and all of a sudden the advantage was uh, was gone. And there have been many games like that. So he really just has to take the chances he he's getting. It's still only a two-point lead. That being said, I think Hikaru's got good chances to increase that lead in this game right here. Yeah, sometimes you're playing against Hikaru and you're kind of waiting for that game that's going to give you confidence and 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 give you, the, you know, like you'll... Like when you play Hikaru, you, you second guess a lot of the tactics and calculation based on knowing who you're playing. Um, but he's, he, 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 he has to trust himself and he has to be a little more assertive in his games because he's not going to get those easy chances. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have to be sloppy regardless. Um, right, yeah. But there will also be games where, uh, yeah, you, you might not get a whole lot of chances. That being said, I, I don't know what is the deal with uh, Hikaru, Eric. Maybe it is the fact that he's streaming. When you're streaming, you're going to talk a lot. You're going to explain a lot of plans and ideas. And then you look at your clock and you're down two minutes. And that might be what's happening right here with Hikaru going below two minutes on the clock. I've been seeing that he's behind on the clock in a couple of games. And I feel like he's aware of that. And he wants the games to take more time. But he hasn't been low on time because he's hated his positions. Like... This feels a little bit like Hikaru's definitely trying to shake off the rust. I think, what, was he on holiday the past week, Benjamin? So maybe he's trying to get as much chess in as possible um, and just go through the process. Because these are not positions that... If you, if you see Hikaru play against Magnus and he's slightly better, he plays fast, he plays practical. He's not... Like, if he was, if he was playing in a really intense match, there's no way he's spending a minute in a, in, in, in a middle game position. He's a very and practical player. After a long thing, he went B4. I'm sure he was calculating to move A3 by Yu Yi, but Yu Yi goes Knight D7 instantly, followed by C5. So there, perhaps Hikaru lost a lot of time unnecessarily because uh, Yu Yi did not go down the line he was calculating. Now I think after Knight D5, Black should be doing completely fine. Thing on G2 is not a good idea for the moment as it runs to Rook G1 and you lose the G7 pawn. But Yu Yang Yi having a completely fine position here and up almost two minutes on the clock. Maybe he can get some chance in this game. Yeah, the main thing is like Hikaru is very good at running up the score and like winning two, three, four games in a row. Yang Yi lost the last game, even here. Go back to the drawing board. A draw with black is totally fine. If you're up down two games, it doesn't mean you have to like start forcing things with, with black here. So just, just playing something stable and securing that half point, I think. Just uh, and give himself another chance with white next next game. That should be the goal. Right. So we see rook b c eight, rook a c one by Karu. Now there is ninety seven attacking the bishop and the pawn on a three, but white can just go bishop to b two. So black's doing pretty fine here, but I don't really see a way to improve the position. He goes ninety seven, bishop b two. So let's see what he will do here. Maybe something like knight b six, but I guess white just doing completely fine as well after bishop b five. Yeah, bishop b5, it's it's a no-risk position. Um, and one of those things where if you make a small mistake as black, you might lose the a-pawn, and then white gets a little bit of a of a push. So Carver's probably pretty happy here, and he's preparing bishop b5, just getting into an endgame. On paper, I think this is the section where if you're Yu Yang Yi, you're counting on scoring the most in the five-minute five, five minute section, and the closer Hikaru gets to the next, next segment... Um, the greater, greater his chances. Yeah, and I feel like Hikaru is slowly but surely getting an edge on the board here. He's putting some pressure on the knight on c5, which is still defending the pawn on a4, but you're in all sorts of pins, and it's it's really difficult to see what exactly white, uh, what exactly black is going to do. That being said, look at the clock. Hikaru dropping now to 30 seconds. He's definitely slower than, than he usually is. Yeah, I, I, I swear he's like using this as warm-up or something, because... There are certain days where Hikaru just doesn't get in time trouble. He's 
plays fast, sees everything. And yeah, these positions are not not hard positions. Again, though, I mean, White out of, you know, Hikaru might be down a minute and 20 seconds, but back in a position where, where he's pushing the pace and Yu Yang Yi has to be very accurate at the end of the game to, to hold things here. There's, there's some yep. looseness, you know, the knight is a bit loose on c5, the pawn on a4. And Hikaru is definitely cooking up a tactic somewhere here. Some sort of knight so, c4 at the right moment. Yeah, knight c4, perhaps followed by knight a5 or knight b6. Yu Yang Yi could perhaps move this knight at some point, let's say something like knight b3, and try to simplify the position. I guess he wouldn't mind a draw, but Hikaru, of course, could give, keep the game going with something like knight c4. So let's see. What Yu Yang Yi is gonna do here? Who who is up fifty seconds on the clock? Yeah, but we need a move for block here. I mean, Knight C four is coming, and uh, this is easy to blunder. I mean, Knight B four, uh, Knight B six, sorry, is is a move here. There's some discovered checks in certain positions. I I wouldn't feel that comfortable, uh, Benjamin. If I was playing block here, all of a sudden just. How do I deal with knight b6? Yeah, knight b6 is annoying, knight a5 even moves like e5, uh, damaging a black spawn structure and also setting up the idea of knight to d6. And look at the clock, Eric. Now it's evening up. Yu Yang Yi dropping down to wait, but take a knight e5 that looks very good for white. Yes, take a knight e5. And of course, he spots it right away. Yeah, now. And this is the worst kind of thing to be in, to be slightly worse against Hikaru. No chance of a win, just trying to hold to you know, hold the draw. This is a nightmare. Yeah, and it came from nothing. I mean Hikaru just outmaneuvered him um during crunch time. Yeah, rook d8, king c3. Okay, he gives up the a pawn, but he, he's going for counterplay on the king side. However, it feels like black's counterplay is coming way too slow. And also this bishop on b7 is feeling very very uncomfortable after a potential rook c7 move. Yeah, rook c7, rook a7 traps the bishop, right? So that's what Black's contending with. Why they're not playing rook g1 is this rook c7 move. Rook but, c7, bishop a6, I guess. So but there was king c5. Way. That's right. That's right. But now you just take the pawn and Black is completely stuck over here. It goes g5, but Ikaru keeping the status quo on the king side. And I think this one is just over. You can't move your bishop. This bench, is masterful, Benjamin. That, that Black can't move. Ikaru is just going to play king b6 and push the a pawn. The bishop on c8 is stuck, and black's king can't cross the position because of the way the pawns are. So this is just like, Hikaru's put Yu, Yu Yang Yi in a bind, and that is absolutely debor you know, demoralizing. Yeah, no, for sure. Now Hikaru no goes up three games. That was a very tough loss for Yu Yang Yi, and this is what we were talking about earlier. You're, you're going to have your games where you will get your chances against Hikaru, but there will also be games that are, are going to be tough. So if you don't take your chances... It, you're you're gonna have a very tough time against Hikaru. Yeah, like this. I mean, Yu Yang Yi cannot feel like he's playing terribly, but the result it's already five two. I mean, and uh, just same positions, decent positions, but Hikaru wins at the end of the day. And that last game was like a really really good example of uh, of some of Hikaru's advantages over Yu Yang. For sure, yeah. So he goes h6 here, taking the bishop on g5. I don't know why Yu Yang Yi play knight d2. I liked this move knight h4 much better in the last game. Here the knight is just a little bit more passive. And now again, he has to decide, is he going to trade on, a, on e7 or just drop the bishop back? I would personally decide to keep the bishops on the board and still try to go for that f4 push. You can also go bishop h4 if you're feeling very optimistic, but uh, Yu Yang Yi goes for the more timid bishop to e3. So king h8 and f5, I guess they're going to Trade f5 versus f4. White's looking to open up. Black wants to probably play f5. And okay, maybe not. All right, so knight g6 by Hikaru stopping the f4 push. Queen h5 is a move here, hitting the knight. Or maybe g3 setting up that f4 push as well. Let's see which one he's going to go for. But I think Hikaru likes his position here. The, the position is semi-close, so the knights are pretty, pretty good. And White's got this damaged pawn structure. But what what would you do differently? What do you suggest if you're in Yu Yang Yi's corner here? And I mean, it's five to two. He's lost a couple of games in a row. What would you change? Would you make any adjustments or keep trusting yourself, keep getting in the same positions and hope to improve? It's a good question. I think with white, he is getting fine positions. With black, 
I think the position he got in the last game is fine as well. Perhaps just avoid those end games where you're going to be a little bit worse because Hikaru is very good at poking and prodding, asking small questions, and then, you know, also putting pressure on the clock. Th those games are tough, so I think he has to avoid those. I think he has to try to go after Hikaru when he's given the chance and just put him away because there have been games like that where he uh, he has not used his chances to, to the full potential. Yeah, when, when he's getting white, the positions are definitely open enough for, for him to push. Like here, F4 definitely is in the spirit of things. But I, I really don't feel like he's playing so poorly today. And just Hikaru still somehow, without seemingly you know putting in a lot of effort, has just climbed to a pretty serious lead. Like this yep, isn't so Hikaru's best, but he's like cruise control and, and still not giving Yu Yang Yi many, many opportunities or... or ways to, to score yeah no no for sure yeah like Ying Yi's got ha had his chances but it's still so difficult to put Hikaru away and and that that's what makes him such a frustrating opponent in in blitz and then there are also games where he just beats you in an end game or crushes you with uh, in, in the middle game so he, he's a tough opponent and that's why he's he's tilted uh, many many strong grandmasters so, but let's see what he's gonna do here we see it trades on a four a pretty similar position to the last one, Eric, where Yu Yang Yi does have that pressure along the FL. Yep. I mean, if you can get those pieces, the queen, the rooks, all transferred over the F file, that's where, where we've seen some success for Yu Yang Yi. But in this position, it looks like Hikaru's got at least a little more counterplay, maybe knight e5, bishop g4, to try to disrupt white's, white's plans a little bit. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think this one is definitely a better version for Ikaru than the last one. His queen in g5 is pretty well placed. Now he can go for like knight e5, taking the bishop. Knight g4 is there. And I think it's also quite possible that he can get that f5 break in himself. So let's see how Yu Yang Yi... Okay, goes knight f3, trading the knights. Bishop e6, yeah. And we saw in the previous game where he, uh, Yu Yang Yi was going for the f5, Ikaru was like... I'm going to go bishop e6, you might even win a pawn in certain positions, but then I'm going to come up with counterplay against your loose pawn. So here, Hikaru really wants to get rid of this bishop on c4, maybe gain access to the c3 pawn, queen c5, queen a5, queen e5, just harass these loose pawns on the queen side, because the white is definitely doing well in the f-file. Yeah, and I like this move, bishop e6, uh, Eric. Yu Yang Yi could trade the queen for the two rooks here, but I think it's in Ikaru's favor, as his king is sitting completely safe on h7, and white got the, the weakness with the pawn on c3, and Yu Yang Yi is going down that line, but I think Ikaru is just better without any risk. Yeah, they usually say king, as you mentioned, like king position is one of the ways you measure, you know, two rooks versus a queen. And because black's king is, uh, king is safe, and white has these loose pawns, and the king on g1 is kind of targeted, I think black is, uh, is doing quite okay. Yeah, c4 by Yu Yang Yi, making sure that queen c5 is no longer fork. That being said, though, I feel like objectively this should be a draw, but, you know, definitely easier to play for Ikaru. Maybe now queen c3, attacking the queen, the, the rook has to move. Or queen b4, yeah, if he can get that a pawn somehow, there's definitely chances. A queen b4 is a threat, because then the rook has to move, and then maybe black can play queen a3, and just white will not be in position to, uh, to defend the a4 pawn. Queen. Rook f7, good move. One of, yeah, one of White's ideas, I guess, is to try to double Rooks on the 7th. Is that is that what you might consider here, uh, Benjamin? I think so, yeah. In case Black goes Queen b2, I think you just go Rook a f1. Okay, Karo going d5, he's not... Wor oh, wait, you can't the do Queen the c4, d4, he's got it. Yes, he's yeah. going for that, that tricky check. Mm -hmm. So, Yu Yang Yi takes once. All right, but can't how take on c7... This? Yeah. Maybe you just move your king. Like you said, you cannot take here because of queen b6. So I think it's very, it makes a lot of sense to move that king out of the way. In case black takes on c4, maybe then you take on c7. And there he goes, king h1. Could this be a game, Eric, where Yu Yang Yi could get some chances again? If white can like double rooks on the seventh, but I don't really see how that happens without giving black a perpetual. Like, I'm, I think Hikaru was think going into this position thinking, I'm, I'm okay with the draw. Um, but I, it, it, I do think Yu Yang is going to look for ways to try to win this, and I think the main way is to 
uh, figure out how to stabilize the rooks and, and, and target something, but um, I just don't see how to do that in practice. Yeah, c3, an interesting move by Karo. Now Yu Yong Yi could bring the rook in with, let's say, rook of one or rook e1, aiming to double up the rooks. Hikaru probably is going to take over here, then Y can take on c3. And Eric, how would you evaluate the position in case all of the queenside pawns are traded off? If anything, White is certainly playing for a win. Yeah. But can you actually win this one? You're, you're going to try to gang up on the g7 pawn, but, but will it be enough to win? I'm inclined to think it's not enough to win with like perfect play, but I think the main thing here for you is just to try. I mean, you try to put pressure on, but no, I don't think, I don't think there's enough here to win. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, I don't like that, I didn't like that move Rook E1, because after Queen takes A4, he actually could not take on C3, as there would have been Queen B4, and you lose a full Rook. That being said, now he's ganging up on the G7 pawn, but I guess you just defend it with Queen D4, and after White takes, you play A4 and set the A pawn in motion. Yeah, and then Rook A7. Yeah, well, and, and, yeah, and then actually, what, what do you do there with Black, as uh, your Queen has to keep defending? Trying to go for some sort of perpetual with, I don't know, queen f4 or something. But then you hang g7, that seems a oh, little yeah, bit yeah, too yeah, much. That's right, that's right, that's right. So, Yu Yang Yi certainly having some chance here. Hikaru having 140 on the clock, so he's got a time to figure out a defense here. So let's see what he will do. Hikaru's looking for perpetual, right? Like looking for the most mm -hmm. efficient way to, to perpetual or win the c2 bond. But how do we do that without giving up g7? Do you think black at some point just has to give up g7? They have to play h5? Like just play h5 here so the king has some breathing room? And yeah. there he goes. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So in case white takes, you can still go king h6 or prepare giving up that pawn with king h6, rook d7. So let's see, maybe now you go queen f... Do you go queen f2 and give this pawn or, or still hang on to it with queen e5? Uh, it's a tough question. Let's say hang on to it. Let's go queen e5 or queen f6. I like queen oh, e5. No, no. After rook e7, yeah. maybe then queen g5. And okay, now at the very least you can make a draw. I, and it looks like he's going to like take the draw. draw, right? Yeah. 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 It's a perpetual. But he is going to run down the clock to play queen e1. Or no, the game already ended in the draw. I think uh, we're done the five one portion. Is that right? Five and a half. Yeah, so it didn't half? matter. It didn't matter anyway. So we're done with the five plus one portion, and we see that Hikaru has got a three point lead. Business as usual right now. I mean, he's put a lot of pressure on Hikaru, but hasn't really cracked him uh, outside of one game, and uh, yeah, needs to needs to find some momentum in the in the next segment, three minute segment, which. Uh, coming up next exactly yeah so Ikoro having a three-point lead Yu Yang Yi did have his chance but he wasn't quite able to put them away except for one game but even in that one Hikaru was winning in the final position but lost on time so let's see if Yu Yang Yi is going to get some more chance in a three plus one but Eric I feel like as the time gets shorter Hikaru is, is only going to get better and better Absolutely. But for now, Benjamin, we're going to take a break. You're watching the 2023 Speed Chess Championships presented by Coinbase. Up next is a 3-1 segment. We're going to take a break first. We got a four-minute break. Five-minute break. Like it. Hey. Well, it's showing five minutes on on the on the screen, so I guess.
September bots are here, and it's time for a monumental clash. This barbarian might not crush you on the board, but he certainly can crush you with the board. Speaking of crushing, this giant is a living siege tower. Usually found in groups, goblins are fond of sharp, pointy objects and other people's pieces. The battle-hardened Valkyrie might give you a game once she's done arm-wrestling a golem. This hog rider and his noble steed might give you a headache or two. Skeletons adore her, foes fear her. You'll need to bring your A-game if you want to beat this witch. Yes, that probably is a rabbit up his sleeve, or a huge fireball with your name on it. We hear wizards are pretty good at chess. Not just a killing machine, Pekka loves tiny butterflies. But you're probably not a butterfly, so watch out! The Archer Queen thinks highly of herself, and for good reason. She is a skilled tactician, deadly opponent, and your worst nightmare. Play them all on chess.com.
the premier online speed chess tournament. A knockout filled with tension, drama, quick tactics, and shocking moments. Oh my gosh! For the last seven years and counting, the best blitz and bullet players in the world have flocked to chess.com to prove their worth at this format. <gasps> Excitement reigns every year with major upsets and intense battles. This year, 12 invitees and four qualifiers face off for the title. Dozens have tried, but only two have ever worn this crown. Magnus makes it look easy. He's he made it. over. He wins the speed chess championship his fifth in a row. Who will be this year's Blitz King? It's time to find out. Welcome to the 2023 Speed Chess Championship, presented by Coinbase. Welcome back to the 2023 Speed Chess Championships presented by Coinbase and we're going to take a look at Hikaru Nakamura's online chess resume uh, which is only growing by a year and uh, he's the, the heavy favorite in today's matchup but this isn't his first time playing the Speed Chess Championships. Benjamin, can you tell us a bit about his uh, other accolades? Yeah, Hikaru is a five-time US Chess Champion. He's also the reigning and five-time Speed Chess Champion. He's also the reigning World Fisher Random Champion and the reigning four-time Bullet Chess Champion. So, a very packed resume, Eric. I mean, I think uh, only Magnus has a, has a better one. Yeah, I think we're spoiled um, these days because the two greatest, you know, Speed Chess players uh, of our generation, maybe in history, Hikaru and Magnus, are... Are competing in a lot of the same events here on chess.com um and and so yeah we're spoiled for choice for sure yeah so in this matchup hikaru having a three point lead he's doing pretty well we're now moving into the three plus one portion and i'm curious to see how he's going to start up the next game is it going to be c3 or c4 eric c3 i uh i cheated i waited a bit there but looks like he he's finishing up his bingo card yep all right, so now he's going into a modern setup with g3 and bishop g2. He often goes for these setups with d4, and then after e4, or we see Yu Yi trading here. This should be a pretty comfortable reversed Karakan or Catalan position, however you want to call it for black, given the fact that this, this bishop on g2 is not great, as it's just staring at this pawn on d5, which you can always defend with the pawn on c6. Yeah, I mean, black, black's usually totally fine in these structures. I just want to point out, I mean, Hikaru is streaming on his kick page, but very few players can do this. And, and when sometimes people ask me, Benjamin, I'm curious what you think. They're like, you know, Hikaru is doing even better as a streamer. That's not a very, that's not very common. It's not very easy, but I really do think it comes down to he also is more relaxed when he's streaming. And not everyone, some people streaming is very stressful, but for Hikaru, it actually seems to, to, to relax him and, and support his chess. Would you agree? I, I think so on one hand. On the other hand, I do feel like he's playing a little bit slower than usual. And uh, perhaps he is messing around a little bit uh, too much in this one with the move e4. And I like what Yu Yang Yi is doing with this move c5. So I think, generally speaking, in like Title Tuesdays and whatnot, I think it definitely helps him. But in the SCC, it, it might be, again, it might be distracting him a little bit, I, I think. I mean, he is getting, you know, behind on the clock, but... He's choosing to play these openings, right? It's some sort of, I don't know, maybe it was a dare or a personal challenge or what it was, but the positions Hikaru is getting is why, you know, that's that's totally his choice. He's choosing to start with C3 and try to figure out these openings um, over the board. And uh, I don't think we'll see that in other matches, and I don't think we'll see that, you know, the time trouble in other matches either. Right, so we see Hikaru up upon here, but his king is stuck in the center here on e1, and perhaps a move like bishop c5 now, making sure that white can no longer go kingside castles. However, after Hikaru drops his queen back, how are you going to continue from there? Maybe something like queen b6. We see knight b4 right away by Yu Yang Yi, so what is his idea in case Hikaru drops back now? Maybe bishop f5, just continue, but um, yeah. H6 I... is another idea. Mm -hmm. 
I definitely do still like this move, Bishop c5, to make sure that White cannot go kingside castle. In case White goes kingside castles, I think all of his problems are solved. But as long as this king remains in the middle, Black's definitely got chances here. I like Bishop c5. I, I do. That's, uh, that probably was just a lot better than, than, than this, this move that I suggested, because allowing White to castle is a, is a big accomplishment for, for White here. And Bishop c5, it was not totally clear to me how, how that was going to be achieved, so... Hikaru now he's shaking his head, he's 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 feeling it. Um position's a lot easier to play with the king on g1 compared to the king on e1. So I think you're right there, Benjamin, that uh bishop c5 was more uh testing. Yeah, bishop b5 by Yu Yang Yi. He is attacking the pawn on d5, but he could have also recaptured it right away, as he had bishop c5 followed by Queen d5 right after. Now Hikaru remains of a pawn after rook 81. So besides getting his king out of the middle. I think Yu Yang Yi could have gotten a lot more from this uh, this opening. So let's see. He still's got he still has commentation, but uh, I think he could have gotten much more. Do you like the SEC format uh, the way it is right now? I don't mean it in like a criticism way. I mean like one thing I know for the Bull Chess Championships is the players were discussing how long the matches should be. It was a three hour match, like what we're watching now. I mean, realistically, Hikaru really is a serious favor, right? I mean, it's one thing to beat him in a segment, but to beat him over three hours, that's just, there's going to be fewer upsets with the way the format is. And some people like that. Some people may be like, oh, let's do shorter. Because in a 30-minute match or one-hour match, you can, you can have a, a rough session. Yeah, no, that's a very good point. I, I think, you know, given the fact that it's a three-hour match, Hikaru's chances to win this one... We saw before the match, the, our, 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 the, the stats were giving Hikaru a 95% chance to win. But I think if you, if you really do the math, it might just uh, turn out to be like 99.99%. Mm. Like, I think it's going to be very difficult for Yu Yang Yi to upset him in, uh, in this one. And uh, especially given the fact that I think Hikaru is going to run away in the bullet. Yeah, that's why. Because it's like, SCC has been around for a long time. I think I first started commentating on it 2016, 2017. It's one of the grand slams, let's say, of online chess. So, I mean, the matches are a bit longer. Um, but uh, Hikaru is, is just always so consistent there that uh, I, I really don't see many people capable of upsetting him. Besides, you know, like Ferruja and Magnus, I, I look at the field and the way he play, he's playing is... Um, I don't see who else is going to upset him outside of, uh, yeah, Ali Reza or, or Magnus. We see Hikaru going knight f5 instantly, but couldn't he not win back the exchange with knight e6? Now knight e3, wait, but queen c3 here, threatening mate. How do you deal with queen that? Queen c3. Yeah, it's just a blunder oh, by Yu and Yi. Now, that's... yeah. Yeah, and he was just winning in this one, and now he's just lost. So. Again, you're not going to get that many opportunities, so you cannot just throw them away like this. I, I would just be demoralized. Yu Yang Yi is definitely feeling uh, demoralized. I mean, you get so many good positions, and, and all you have is one win to show for it, and about to take uh, his fourth, fourth loss. At least, maybe fifth. Yeah, then... Oof. Queen c7 now, it's just all falling apart. It's very likely that you're just going to hang one of the knights here in the next couple of moves. Or, if I could just push this A-pawn up the board, this one is just gone. And he's running out of time as well. Now, Ikaru's going to go up four games here. That, yeah, let's have a look at that real quick, perhaps. When, yeah, Bishop takes b3 and Queen takes d2, this one is nice, over. Nice, tw nice way to trade everything. Yeah, so right here after night, so Hikaru, oh, well, we're already off to the next game, but yeah, Hikaru, he was, he, he was lost, but Yu Yang Yi blundered there with the move 93. We see him switching it up with the Scotch opening, so perhaps he fi he felt like the Spanish Four Nights was not working out for him? Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe between three and five minutes, you can make a couple adjustments. You do have less time for the openings uh, in the shorter time control, so maybe you can choose something a little sharper. And, and take some risks. I think in the match situation, you might as well anyways. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is a nice change of pace. It's easy to forget your lines as a block here and end up in a tough position. So worth a try. 
Yeah, so we see Hikaru going for Queenside Castles. Not quite the move, I believe. Now Yu Yin Yi could go for c5. Attacking the bishop. Black has to take on, on f1. You take on b6. That looks extremely risky for Black, Eric. You're going to have to play move like bishop a6. Yeah, bishop a6 and then king b7. And Oh yeah, but this is... You're right. Yeah, this is... Well, it's paying off so far. I mean, a7 is going to fall no matter what now. And uh, any, any positive momentum here. Or, uh... But but here's the thing, even though he cars with his back against the wall, he, he finds these only moves. Like rookie eight apparently was the only move. The idea is that in case white takes on a7, it looks lost, because white's turning mate, attacking the bishop. But there's still queen b4, followed by queen b7 or queen b5. Maybe he had to go bishop a3 here first. It still looks like a great opening for, for Yu and Yi, but it's always impressive and, and also extremely annoying when you're on the other side, how he car finds these only moves. Yeah, I mean, he's looking for that knockout, knockout punch as as white here, looking for checkmate. And Hikaru will always like make sure, even if you have a checkmate, you have to find every precise move uh, beforehand in order to get it. And so even here, like if you're playing white, you kind of don't want to trade queens in some ways. You're like, I'd like to like go go for a checkmate, but uh, here this is just a matter of uh, conversion. I think uh, white's going to be up material regardless, and uh, and he contain the bishops. Well, now after f6, it seems like Black is doing pretty fine. Like, how do you hang on to the pawn on e5? So that's also what's so demoralizing. Like, it feels like Ikaru's blundered in the opening. You get a position that, that looks winning. He didn't find it. And here, you might even have to be careful. If Black can take the pawn on e5 and then take the pawn on c7, why would Black not be better with the two bishops? And Ikaru now also up 30 seconds on the clock. Yeah, maybe even bishop a3 check. I mean, he's just frustrated. I think you think he's frustrated what he just allowed. White had this pawn center and just falling for f6 it looked like a blunder to me just uh uncharacteristic but those things happen when you start getting frustrated everyone has their breaking point yeah king yeah. c2 an odd move rook f5 very nice move by hikaru he wants to take on c7 and make sure that white does not have that move bishop before so i think yu yang yi should have played the move bishop before on the last turn now it feels like hikaru is just going to pick up this pawn and i think it's just he will just be better with the two bishops yeah, those are two bishops. Those are two very, very good bishops. So um, I don't know what white can do to try to interrupt that, but. You know what's another typical Hikaru move here? Rook f2. Like pin the bishop, tangle white yeah. up a little bit, and delay taking that pawn on c7. And that's what's so annoying. You play rook h1, and then you're like, oh, what do I actually do after rook f2? Hikaru pauses, and then he finds it. But, but let's see if he actually will, or if he will just take on c7. I like Rook F2. It definitely feels like a Hikaru move. Whatever is a little more unpleasant and causes a few more issues. As white, I yep. want to play Knight E4. I want to find some squares to activate with. But after Knight E4, I don't even know what the follow-up is for the Knight. Everything is kind of covered, which is pretty annoying. Knight E4 is in the spirit of the position a bit to try to like play Knight E4, G4 maybe, dislodge the Rook, play Bishop F4. Um, something before black gets settled in with the two bishops and starts taking away everything. And bishop c3, nice move by Yu Yi. And actually, how do you deal with the attack on rook? If you go rook g, there's knight of six, and the rook is trap. Wait, did he Koru just blunder here? Maybe you can actually take an e4 and go rook f2. That might still work out. And, uh, but let's see if he will find it. If you don't find it, you're just going down the exchange. And that could be another thing, which is pretty demoralizing where you feel like your opponent blunders and then they're still completely fine i don't see the refutation here uh there, there probably is one but i just don't see it right now like if you take on e4 i take the rook rook f2 check rook d2 bishop d3 bishop check d3. King d1 yeah actually that still looks fine as there's always bishop c3 to block so one or what exactly he goes rook c5 that one looks off maybe now Bishop c3, and then bishop Does c7. Does some play rookie. king d2, right? Then bishop, bishop uh, h6 Eight. check is going to hurt. Yeah, he went king b2, bishop d3. Okay, now you have to cover rook c2, so I guess. Hikaru is slippery. I mean, he's going to go like rook h5, rook g5, or make some, make some holes here. Rook f5, nice move. He's aiming to slide into f2, but in case of rook d2, there's bishop h6. So I guess you just make a move, like, I don't know, a4. And meet rook d2 with rook d2. 
Yeah, I mean, Yu Yang Yi's done a good job in most games of, like, staying up on the clock. Just, like, at some point during crunch time, you can't keep up the same pace. That's the other thing about Hikaru, is, like, he plays fast, and he just never blunders, and other people, if they play that fast, you just, we just do blunder at some point. Uh, it's very, very hard to, to ma manage and maneuver these end games the, the way Hikaru does. Uh, I don't know, Rook? He went for the, he gave back the material. I actually like that, Benjamin. It's, it's, um, maybe not the computer choice, but it takes away a lot of the risk. Because there's even a risk that Hikaru would have won that position. Now, there's absolutely no chance Black should win. Just down a, down a full pawn, and it's a protected pawn on the A file. So I, I, I think this was a good practical choice by Yu Yang Yi. Yeah, and I think a good decision for sure. He goes rook f7, king b6. Maybe just straight push the A pawn off the board. I think the only way Hikaru could ever win this one is on time or by a massive blunder by Yu Yang Yi. But you made a very good point earlier. Like, Hikaru is very good at moving quickly in these time scrambles. Wait, isn't that just another pawn take? And there is just bishop d2, as there's no way to attack the bishop. Yep. That's a that's a blunder. That's a blunder. Bishop d2. Then then you're preparing king d3 or whatnot. And uh, this has to be a win. No matter what, Yu Yang Yi has to win this position. Yeah. Anything but two, a win is an absolute failure. Yeah. Two very clean pawns here. He goes a4, just king d3. Okay, but rook h5. But yeah, Hikaru, what he also what he always does when his opponent is already thinking. He is anticipating the next move. Rook g5, by the way, ends the game here because you win another pawn. King c4, also good. That's very g4, nice. Maybe. That's very nice. I like I like this rook g5. Um, He's being annoying though. If you take this rook c1, it's not over rook e6, king d7, rook e4. Rook e4, king c6. King d4. I don't know then. It's not over yet. Like, it's annoying. Just like as, <laughs> he's, he's a pest. He's a pest, but I mean, white doesn't need to. They just need to hold. Check and king d5. Yeah, and he, that's the thing. He <sighs> pre-moves king d5 to put more pressure, you know? Okay. Bishop e5 and he's completely back. Yeah, no, he's... Oh my goodness, Benjamin. How, like, how does this how happen? How is he doing this? Now he's winning a4. And now the rook... And, and now he's going to go rook g4, pick up the pawn, and play for a win oh. on time. <laughs> oh, man. No, that's... Yeah, it... We've all been here. The guy the down that, two pawns is the one. He's gonna go bishop g7, win. bishop g7, and he keeps the game going. And now he's gonna play for 50 moves. <laughs> yeah, th this is the he car. Okay, he goes rook e6. It's actually shocking that he just trades of the rooks. Like this was completely two pawns up. Wide. Yeah, it's completely. I mean, you found the move rook g5, but um, we've been there. But this is like you, you, you know, early on in the day, if you have what it takes to beat Hikaru on a given day, like. When you start messing those up, this the doubt that creeps in, it's very hard to overcome. I mean you you have to be thinking like how is he gonna like like he's just thinking like I'm I'm dead here. Like there's if I can't win these positions, like what am I doing? It is so frustrating. Yeah, no, it, it really is like you've done all the work, you've got a good position you've got a winning position, you only have to put it away, and that's when he just he refuses to make that final mistake that allows you to the force auto it was there with rook g5 but yeah he keeps being uh he he he, he keeps hanging on i mean this is some i don't know this is preparation it looks looks fun though so king f1 is that what we're expecting here and just uh Black's playing for compensation. I was just about to say, I think it would be any other player that would go knight c3, but given the fact that it's Ikaru, he just goes king of one and does not care. Um, all right, now the knight is under attack. This does not work out at all for white. Again, I think he's taking way too much risk. So can Yu Young Yi put him away? I mean, the thing is, Eric, although it's already a four point lead, I was going to say it's a three point lead, but it's already four point. That's, that's a lot. I mean, Hikaru, like, he plays, they have the bullet brawls now. It doesn't matter the time control, he's, like, at the very top. So, yeah, you're, you're looking at the lead, it's four points, and projected, it's going to go up in the bullet portion. Now, unless there's intel we're missing, and Yu Yang Yi's, like, a bullet monster, Hikaru's only going to run up the score even more. So this is definitely, these were, these were critical games for Yu Yang Yi to try to equalize. Rook D2, that, that's game. Like, if, if Yu Yang Yi doesn't win, yeah, okay, yeah, like, this is too much. 
All right, so finally he wins a game. It's now back to three points. Again, even though Hikaru has, has a pretty hefty lead, he keeps messing around in these openings. So if Yu Yu wins another one, then it's down to two, and, you know, it, it, it's a match again. But it feels... I agree it's a match, but it all feels like Hikaru's playing with himself a bit. He's trying to make it a match. He's seeing how, you know, how overboard he can go with some of these opening choices and, and positions that he's, that he's getting. Because that last game, I mean... That felt a bit unnecessary. Felt a little, little risky, what he was doing, as you mentioned, king f1. Yeah, like he knows, like, okay, the... I can go knight c3 and make a draw, but I don't want to make a draw, so then he, he messes around. He goes knight c8. He's, he's provoking Yu Yangi. He's asking for something like queen g5, queen h5, knight g5 to happen. And white's got a very clear strategical edge here. It's, it's going to be very difficult for black to create any counterplay on the queen side, and in the meantime, black can start piling up on the king side. So let's see how Yu and Yi will, uh, will do it here. Would you push the h-pawn? Like you said, white has a strategic advantage. What does that mean uh, in, in the context of actual moves here? Like, is it just building up play on the king side, or...? Yeah, I think just building up play on the king side. As Black usually plays on the queen side, but for now that seems impossible. He goes h6. I think Yu and Yi at some point maybe can go for stuff like g4, g5. 98, nice remaneuver by Hikaru. Uh, that being said, though, even though White's better, it's difficult to break through. These Karo compositions are, are pretty solid. And Hikaru's playing this Karo can with this early A5, as opposed to A6. Is that like a more modern uh, approach? Because it does permanently weaken this B5 move, which uh, I'm not as familiar with. It's not an idea I'm familiar with, uh, <laughs> with either. Yeah, I think White is just better. <laughs> Uh, but Hikaru is going to be resilient here. I mean, White's going to build up an attack with like Rook AE1, Rook E3, 95. I think most players here would really struggle against Yu Yang Yi, who, don't forget, is a very strong Grandmaster, but Hikaru uh, seems to be fine with it. And hey, Eric, what about the move G4 here, followed by G5? I like it. I like it. Um, that's the most direct way to <laughs> try to checkmate your opponent. Yu Yang Yi is, yeah, he's... he's, he's He's too hesitant. quiet, slow moves, and he's too hesitant, as you mentioned. I, I like this G4. I mean, Hikaru needs to feel pressure, and he hasn't felt pressure this match. He's had some tough positions, but he, looking at his body language and looking how he's playing the positions, you don't get the sense he believes Yu Yingyi is going to punish him if he, if he takes some uh, unnecessary risk. He's gotten away with a lot uh, <laughs> yeah. so far in this match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I don't see what the move queen g4 does. Okay, he goes to h4, and I guess this slowly but surely improves the position. Maybe queen of4 now. Again, I, I I think he's looking at g4 down the line. Maybe now you move to queen. But g4 there seemed like a pretty straightforward opportunity to break down on black's uh, king side. Now it's going to be more difficult with this knight around. So do you play queen h3 and then prepare g4? I mean, queen h3, what happens after knight h5 again? How do you avoid the repetition here? Because I want to go G4 right go here. G3. He'll go G3. Maybe just G3. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's double check and, and the thing is, again, Black is not doing anything. B5 is, is impossible for the moment. So we see Hikaru going Queen C7. Perhaps aiming to go Queen F4 and Queen G4 to trade those Queens off. So, like, do we go G4 anyways and after Queen F4 play Knight at H2 or do we have to prepare it more? Because we've kind of been criticizing Yu Yang Yi a bit for being hesitant, but... Hikaru's making sure that whatever it is, it's it's still not an easy choice. Yeah, so he traded the knights. This looks fine to me. I guess the rook can always drop back here. It's going to be difficult to get g4, and, and it's not going to come with the same effect, I feel. So Yu Yang Yi is still better. Hikaru also doesn't have a plan for the moment. I mean, the b5 break is firmly restricted. So let's see. But he will find a way. <laughs> he will find a way to do something. Yeah. g4 is tempting here. Oh. Bishop, you play bishop b5, you go g4, g5. You know you have a good position as white, which is what, what what's frustrating here. Um, because as a result, it's like black is playing provocatively in the sense black has no active plan here whatsoever. But that also puts pressure on you to try to look for a breakthrough because he knows he's better. And he's putting pressure on himself to try to like turn that into a tangible advantage. Um, but what what's the breakthrough going to be? Is it going to be c4? Is it going to be g4? Those are the main breaks. Uh, and he's gone there for G4. he goes G4. There we go. 
All right, so let's see. But now Hikaru could just go g6 and go king g7, and he finds it right away. So here's the thing, Hikaru didn't really have a plan, but I feel like this move g4 could easily backfire, and it, it could give Hikaru a counterplay if the king side opens up. Now he goes bishop b5. It doesn't seem very coherent what Yu Yang Yi is doing. He goes g4, but then he moves his bishop all the way over to the queen side. Yeah, I don't think it's he's sure himself what, what, what he's going for in this position, but one of the ideas might be with bishop b5 is to take on d7 and put a queen on f6. Um, I don't know long term how useful that is to go queen f6 check. And then, yeah, play this two rooks and queen position. Like, feels like black is okay though. Like, queen is on f6, but black's gonna play rook h5. They can trade the queens. Um, yeah, every trade gets black a little closer to a comfortable endgame. So, I mean, that being it's said, frustrating. If, <laughs> yeah. You want to go if rook h1? If gets the time to go rook h1, trade of the rooks, then move the yeah. other rook to the h file, then it's going to be annoying for, for black. So, I like this move rook h1 a lot. You trade, then after you go rook e3 to h3, and your queen can go to e5, can go to h4, and that will be very difficult for black to deal with. So, let's see how Hikaru will try to manage. He's up 30 seconds on the clock. That Let's see if he can put that to work. Where is, is black planning on putting their queen on g7, you think? Because, yeah, Yu Yang is going with the plan you mentioned. You want to go, what, rook? Rook h3? h3. Then you're threatening queen rook. f6. Okay, rook here is to stop queen d8 check after queen f6, queen g7. But probably queen, queen uh, f6, queen g7, queen e7 anyways, Benjamin. Just to force the pieces to worst squares. Okay, I guess it was... That looks very good. Or just go pawn grabbing on the queen. So queen e5, queen g7. Okay, you have to keep the queens on. He's making yeah. it difficult. Queen f4. Okay, now what are you doing here? Up. You've got a dominant position, but no easy way to break through. Is it, yeah. Isn't this a threefold? I mean, no, yeah, no, you I can't. I hope not. It is. It was? I mm. think he didn't realize it, but that that's a pity. Like, you have to win games like that. And even then, it's like, what did Yu Yang Yi miss? What we're critical of is he allowed a three-time repetition, but there wasn't a breakthrough that we were sure about. You just had to keep the game going. Just for the sake of the match, you just have to keep the game going, but Hikaru still didn't make it that, that simple towards the end. Yeah, this yeah, is... Yeah, no, that's the thing. It's missing, hey, missing that X factor. Some of these, he's had a bunch of good positions, but not to be it seems like uh today yeah it's just super frustrating he gets pushed with his back against the wall but he doesn't get pushed over the edge it felt like there had to be something for you and you but he kind of finds these only moves like queen f8 rook c8 you've got a good position but still you have to put the game away and and that's where hikaru he he just doesn't go away he he hangs in there he makes it difficult for you he plays fast but still you know yeah you, you have to you have to try and mm -hmm. Uh, you, you should not have a lot of repetition that easily there. Yeah, I think it's just scary knowing that this is kind of like Hikaru on cruise control. He's not at his maximum. He's not playing his, his top openings. He's definitely messing around a bit. And and he's he's casually just, you know, on his way to, to a dominant win. And looking at even the speech chess championships in the brackets, it is a stacked field this year. And there's a lot of first round matchups that I have no idea who's who's going to be on top. Definitely not one where I'm going to take the favorites for granted. But Hikaru, he just makes it look so, so routine. Yeah, no, for sure. And here, I kind of like his position. It feels like it's a little bit easier for white to maneuver. Maybe something like knight g2 to, to f4. Black's got these knights over here on f6 and g6, but they're firmly restricted by all of white's pawns. Maybe now Hikaru can expand on the queen side, and that's what he does. And... You know, with b5 coming, this king over here can easily come under attack because what we've got here is a queenless middle game. Only the queens have been traded off, but still, all of the other pieces are on the board. So, I think Ikora's got a very nice advantage here. And, Eric, we've talked about this before. There are going to be games where you're going to have chances, but there are also going to be games where Hikaru's just going to grind you away. And that's uh, that's what makes this match so tough. Yeah, yeah, there's no no room for error. This is one of those positions Yuying is going to have to just, I mean... Uh, survive. Knight f5. Yeah, that's already a bad position. Just two bishops and look at these pawns. 
Just black and maybe go knight b6, knight c4, but yeah. When Hikaru gets a good position, he does not let you go. Nope. So what about bishop d2 here, followed by bishop f4, exerting some pressure on d6. And Eric, here's another thing. We were saying like maybe you should go knight b6, followed by knight c4. He doesn't do it, and then Hikaru's like, wait, let me go ahead and stop that. So now the knight is headed to c6, but that doesn't seem like it's it's uh, going there with the same effect. No, no, the way the pawns are, these knights are very restricted. You know, sometimes knights, they, they could get on some of these central squares, but the way white's pawns are structured, there's nothing for Yu Yang Yi here. This is, uh, this is, this is close to strategically lost. And, uh, you know, we're, you know, 60 minutes of three plus one, and things are not getting any easier for Yu Yang Yi, you know. Yeah, so great game so far by Hikaru. He goes g4, fully putting that bishop pair to work. I mean, this knight doesn't have any good squares. This knight doesn't either rook h8 by Yu Yang Yi to maintain the pawn on h5. But maybe now just rook e1 or king g3. I like that one as well, defending the pawn on h4. And uh, yeah, we're really seeing a masterclass here, Eric, as to how you should convert the bishop pair. Yeah. Um, every single move, a little bit of progress, or there's a little bit more potential in the position. Now preparing f5. And it's just Hikaru's chess, I mean, very consistent. You know, he plays these positions, there's just no blunders. There's no, even if White doesn't play the top moves, Hikaru always has a style where no matter what, he's playing one of the best moves in the position and, and leaves, gives, gives himself some room to, to even make mistakes. He doesn't have to play the very best moves here, but he's just consistently making a bit of progress. But that being said, let's see how he will try to put this, this one away. Black is still solid for the moment. You can go g5, but perhaps Black can play something like knight b5, followed by rook c8, putting some pressure upon a c3. And Hikaru now going for a bit of a thing. He must realize, like, hey, I've got a dominant position, but how do I actually convert this one? And, and that's never easy. So why aren't we playing f6? What's the, uh, sorry, g5, what's the main concern first after g5? Was it knight, knight b5, you said? Yeah, maybe knight b5 followed by rook c8. I don't know, although actually... F6. That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. So... Then... Yeah. yeah, rook f6, I mean, maybe he's planning on playing knight e8 of rook f6, and then some sort of blockade. I mean, black would love to get... The knight on c7 to f5. That's that's the goal. I mean, the knight on e7 is good. The other knight needs to get to f5. I just, yeah, he's gonna try for that. I think. Yeah, over here, I mean, I think Hikaru is going to spend as much time as possible maneuvering, waiting for the players to get down to 10, 15 seconds, and then maybe B5. Waiting for Yu Yang Yi to get down on the clock, then we might see, see this B5 breakthrough. We've lost Bok a little bit for audio, but you're, you know, I'm still with you guys. And you're just watching here in the 3-1 portion, Hikaru is pressing with the two bishops here and trying to build on that lead. Black's trying to just block it on f5, um, hide the weaknesses, g6 is a weak pawn, as long as the knight on f5 is there, you know, g6 isn't really targeted, but Hikaru's just trying to uh, get uh, both sides of the board opened up. A rook, rook might swing over to a1, maybe b1. I think at some point white's going to pull this bishop back. Maybe to, to, yeah, to d3, hitting g6. And now rook b1 might be a move. If king f7, rook b1 even. I just don't want to go rook b1 yet because I don't want to trade. I don't want to lose the a5 pawn. I'd like to have both. But uh, Hikaru is going to take a sweet time before deciding that. Now knight c6. Is knight c6 a move? Okay, a5 is being hit. King d7. Okay, Hikaru puts the king on... I mean, what Black puts the king on f7. 
Yeah, but now maybe White's King goes to f4. I think that looks good for uh, Hikaru. The King's going to get to f4. Maybe Bishop c5. King f4, rook e1. This is a bit unpleasant. Check. And now g6. G6 maybe. G6 here. Yes. Rook e6 is coming. Rook e6 regardless. And, and Hikaru. Knight d8. There's rook d6. Okay, king up. Yeah, king f4, king g5. This is... Hikaru's just grinding him down here. Pawn up endgame, and the knight is out of play. You're going to pro probably play bishop d6, bishop e5 check. Force the king to go somewhere passive. And now the knight is actually trapped after bishop e5. I think Yu Yang is just going to resign there. I mean, this is a uh, Hikaru masterclass. I've lost my partner. That's okay. I'm used to it. Let me... Karu, though, wraps up the 3-1 uh, portion with, uh, with the win there. We're going to get... Uh... Yep, so Hikaru wins the 3-1 portion by the score of 3-2. So now he's taking a 4-point lead heading into the... Oh, there's still, sorry, there's still 30 minutes left in the 3-1. We're doing a halftime break, but Hikaru is up 3-2. And... Um... After the 30 minute 3 1 portion, we do have 1 1 to wrap things up. And uh, we hope you're loving the 2023 Speed Chess Championships presented by Coinbase. Coinbase is a crypto platform revolutionizing financial systems for a modern world. Update your financial system to one that is accessible, decentralized, and transparent. Head to coinbase.com slash update the system today going to take you to a break and we'll be back with the second half of the 3-1 portion afterwards. Chess.com's game review recently got a major update. Here are four key notes. At the end of each game review, you will now see a summary of the game from your coach, your performance rating for that game, and a quick grade for you and your opponent in the opening, middle game, and end game. We added a new classification called Miss for when a move fails to take advantage of an opportunity, but it is otherwise a sound move. We've also changed the definition of blunder. Now a move will only be considered a blunder if it loses material or allows a checkmate. Coach will now draw arrows and highlight squares when you hover over or click on the highlighted words in the move explanations. This should make move explanations easier to follow. Finally, Coach's explanations will now reference specific pieces and threats in the explanations, making move explanations much more intuitive. The new game review experience is available on chess.com right now. What's the best way to follow any chess event from the Champions Chess Tour to the Candidates, Speed Chess Championship, Title Tuesday, FIDE World Championship, and so much more? Chess.com slash events has all of the top chess tournaments played both over the board and online. Analyze and review games from the world's greatest players with live commentary, cloud analysis, opening explorer, and table bases. Find all the key event information, including schedules, prizes, results, news reports, player bios, tie breaks, and more. Even compete by voting for your predicted results. Explore chess.com slash events today on web or with our iOS and Android apps and experience chess like never before.
Welcome back to the 2023 Speed Chess Championships presented by Coinbase. We have a round one matchup here between Hikaru Nakamura and Yu Yang Yi. And let's take a look at Yu Yang Yi's chess profile a bit and discuss some of his accomplishments. Right, so Yu Yang Yi, he qualified through the first qualifier. He's also a 2014 Chess Olympiad gold medalist. I remember China winning the Olympiad that year and he was definitely one of the top scorers uh, of the team. And he's also a three-time Chinese chess champion. So a very uh, good resume, Eric. Yeah, I mean, Yu Yang has been an elite GM for a long time, just overshadowed a bit by Ding Li Ren, who has won a few more Canadian, uh, Chinese chess championships and is a bit high rated, and now the current reigning world champion. But for uh, 2014, I remember that Olympiad um, that was historic for China, and he was one of the anchors for the team. Um, so yeah, just perennial. Usually board two for China and uh, just goes under the radar a little bit, I'd say, uh, Benjamin. Like some of these players, they don't play that often, uh, especially some of the players from China. Like you don't see them as active as some of the European players on the circuit, maybe because of travel or the games aren't broadcast. But um, he's he's been a, a force for a long time. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, he's been over 2700 for a very long time, like I think 2014, 2015. But he hasn't really managed to get to the next level. But uh, yeah, let's see how he will do in this matchup against Hikaru. Right now he's down four points, but we still have half of the portion left in uh, the three plus one time control. And Eric, the bar for whatever reason is through the roof, but I think that's a mistake. Is it? I'm trying to figure out what the, if there is a move here, is it? Is it I, I think sort of... this is the evil bar from the last game. It hasn't updated yet for whatever oh, reason. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would be very good news for Yu Yang Yi if, if, if he was completely winning in 10 moves, like the bar suggests. Mm -hmm. But for so, the sake of the match, I'm hoping he, he gets something in the in the second half of the 3-1 portion. I mean, um, he's definitely had his positions, especially with White. Mm -hmm, for sure. All right, so he just casts here, he's playing for compensation, Rook D8 by Hikaru, I guess a move like Queen A5. Looks pretty tempting now, attacking the bishop, should be 7, maybe... Although if you take here, there's bishop c6 and black threatens to trap your queen with rook to a8. So what do you do here, Eric? Do you just develop with knight c3 and play for compensation? Yeah, I think you develop. You try to get some pressure on the e-file. Maybe you go rook d1 here and play against the c5 pawn. But uh, yeah, I, I don't really play the scotch, but I know it's usually in the very early opening stage. You can kind of overwhelm black sometimes with, with peace activity. And so I'm looking something in that direction. Maybe knight b5, maybe maybe take in rook d1, but something before black gets castled and into safety. All right, so Yu Yi trades on d8. I like his position here. He can now take on a7. Maybe Hikaru just goes king c8, but definitely not easy here for Hikaru to find a safe place for uh, for his king. And I think for Hikaru, it really depends whether he can get that bishop into the game with bishop g7 and bishop to d4. I mean, this position, I mean, I Hikaru, he, he gave up the a7 pawn, but material's still even. Black has this protected pass pawn on e4, so it kind of depends what you value more. Do you value black's, like, pawn on e4, or do you value white's pawn structure? Because black does have these double c pawns that are going to be uh, a, a problem to, to, to defend. So, very double-edged here. We but have six uh, this by should e be very suitable for, for Yu Yang Yi. Yeah, especially given the fact that he's down on the match. Queen f6 attacking the knight on c3, maybe just bishop b2. Let's see where Hikaru is going to go now. Actually, yeah, where do you go? Like, there's all these sorts of discoveries with knight d5, knight b5. It doesn't look good for Hikaru. He goes rook g8. Yeah, that's the problem with this queen f6 move. You attack the knight, but then you put all your pieces on the same diagonal. So, yeah, after, after rook g8, are you going to go knight a4? Go for some double attack? Um... Because then queen c6 is probably the response. And you don't really want to trade queens. What about this, Eric? Yeah, what about a4 followed by a5? And where does the knight go? If you go to d7, we can perhaps just take and there he goes. Like, where is this knight going? Maybe you have to queen, go back to a8. A <laughs> yeah, do you go knight a8 and try to trade the queens with queen a6 or something? I, I don't know, but uh, white's going for that, uh, I think, that king. This yeah, is, for sure. 
this is crunch time for Ricard. What do you do against this a5 move? I mean, you could just say, yeah, like a5 is played, then knight a8 or knight d7. Is knight d7 playable? No, rook takes d7 is the idea always, I guess. Right, so you're gonna have to perhaps move your queen over to the queen side with something like queen six. He goes g5, going all out on the king Holy side after a5. Smokes. Can you? I, I think you still have to move on the knight, on right? Four. I think really, but after on ab. On, yeah, then f3 or something. I don't know. Uh, that could just be wrong, of course. Um, but uh, Karu played g5. I'm sure he saw a5. That's White's most logical move. I mean, what do you do here? Like knight a8. Almost feels actually, like he was planning on taking on f4, but maybe that's wrong. Yeah, let's see if he actually... Well, I wonder if, let's say after pawn takes f4, takes on b6, f3, can white even go pawn takes c7? There's rook takes g2 with a check, but Otto, you don't have a good score for the king. My idea was that in case you take the king, there's knight d5 check, or actually also knight b5. But I guess black's counterplay is coming a little bit too fast, so maybe we do have to play bishop f1. G takes f4, bishop f1, just to be super uh, safe, like bishop f1 see. right here or afterwards? Oh! He goes a6, I was sure he's going to take. Uh-huh, so, wait, but now let's say you go bishop c6, how do we continue our attack? I, he's going to go knight b5. Uh-huh, knight b5, but queen, maybe f7 or e7, he goes bishop a8 and the evil bar goes through the roof. Wait. There's got to be... Takes, takes, and bishop e5. No, that's game over. Takes on c6 and bishop b, bishop e5. That's game over. Yep. Because you can't. That's right. Yeah, you can. Defend. He's looking at... Bishop e5 right away. That's a little bit sloppy. I think this would have finished off the game right away. Taking was with, with check. Yeah. Now you can still go 97. But white takes over here. But there's no immediate threat. He carved down his last mm. six seconds. What is he going to come up? 97 played. Okay, take. The bishop. You take with the bishop and then prepare like okay knight b6 he's he's worried about this f3 move you know you think he's definitely like double checking this f3 okay but knight b6 is game if you take with the knight it's made if you take with the queen you lose the queen and you're still getting yeah. checkmated and it feels like it's only a check so knight b6 and hikaru loses on time great game by yu young yi like he needs to play more more like these i, I think this is really how he needs to, to play. Like, he just played a tagging chess, not hesitant, and went right after Hikaru. He's equalized in the 3-1 segment, so definitely um, definitely now is the time to, to, to strike. Mm -hmm. That game, I mean, yeah, Hikaru's positions haven't been great today, and he's definitely gotten away with some stuff, so seeing you yeah, punish him uh, one of the few times... It's definitely going to make the match more competitive if you can continue that. Right, so here... But that was also to... a case of uh, Hikaru playing very provocatively, right? Against in the, in the yeah. scotch. But it was a good good energy. Definitely the right way to play well, as white. Well, I think that Hikaru did play a little bit provocatively, but on the other hand, he did not play 1a5 on the first move. He did play his best opening with e4, e5. And I think Yu Yang Yi just played a good game. The scotch is not easy to deal with if you are prepared. And already, Eric, I like his position over here. He goes knight back to c6. It's not that easy for white to deal with this uh, pressure on d4. It looks like black is pretty much equalized, right? You can just trade comfortably and it doesn't feel like this e4 pawn is that special. Like, it looks very active for black. Yeah, we have a symmetrical pawn structure, and if anything, black is a little bit more active. F4 by car, maybe just e5, make sure that white cannot go e5, and then you can plan a knight on d4 right after. Yeah, e5, knight d5, I guess. Yeah, that's interesting. Hmm. Because knight d7, but now e5, white gains more space, and Ikora should be doing fine here. Bishop b7, I guess you go like bishop b4 or b4, threatening b5 and b4, stopping knight b4 c5. b4 looks nice. B4, B4 taking away the squares, look, look nice. Bishop B4 now, Rook C8. But I guess Yu Yang Yi, now you get to prepare A5 at, at some moment, maybe. Or F5, just a challenge. And this again is another typical Hikaru position. Like the queens are off, but a lot of pieces still on the board. And he's got I think more he's exceptionally here. dangerous here. Yeah, this is, this is these, these positions that look like innocent. 
this is like where he just has a small advantage that he's very good at uh, pushing. Yeah, King G2, Rook, nice Rook move. one Rook C1. Yeah. And Yu Yang Yi's pieces lack good squares. Like, some of them are still active, but for example, this knight on D7 doesn't really have a future. This bishop, like, they're all stepping on, on each other's toes. And E6 is a clear target, and I can also go to C6. And uh, I think here's the thing, Eric. Hikaru lost that game, and maybe now he's taking it a little bit more serious. Yeah. Yeah, you want to stop any any momentum, any, any you know, stop your opponent from ha getting very confident. And Hikaru's very good at recovering from losses. You know, usually after a loss, he, he, he doesn't tilt. And uh, it doesn't look like it here. I mean, this looks like just, just comfortable, controlled, and he's just going to slow down the pace. Knight c6, as you mentioned, that might be a nice idea here, but for for the context of the match, like for future games, this is definitely not the kind of position Yu Yang Yi wants to be in. Like a slow maneuvering game, um, here where Hikaru can kind of dictate the pace, I think uh, the pressure is too much. Yeah, bishop b7, also a nice move by Hikaru. I also like the knight b5 jump, attacking this pawn over here and aiming to hop into d6. Is that the Where's plan the... here? Rook c7, knight b5? Or... He... Like... Uh -huh. he just okay. repeats, but now black can improve. Wait, what about knight b5 here? So it takes, you can takes... go knight b5. You can go knight b5. That's the breakthrough. I think even if all of the rooks trade off, these pawns over here are so weak that you're probably just going to drop one of them, and then it's probably just completely lost. This just looks... Losing. It should be 5, take on c7, take on b5, just everything... Everything yeah, falls. You, you take taken. How do you defend the A pawn? I mean, I guess you go A5. You go A5? But it feels like the pawn is sooner or later going to drop, like knight D6 to C4, and there Hikaru goes. You you can't even go to E7 because then there's knight C8, so you're going to have to make a move like. King oh yeah, G7. you can't. That's... Okay, you can't go to E7 because yeah, if you go like King G7, you can go G King G7 here, right? Then I guess yeah. uh, t knight C4 takes takes knight D7. It should. That's. This is bad. <laughs> yeah. Bishop d2, taking the pawn. But okay, black can take now. He goes bishop f2. All right, take, take a knight c4. And I don't see how you hang on to the pawn. In case of a4, there's always going to be bishop c6. Bishop c6 just... You have this knight on f8 and knight on g6, and you don't want to have two knights to stumble over each other. You know, they're competing for the yeah. same square, which is pretty, pretty unpleasant. So, what do you do if you're Yu Yang Yi, Eric? Do you resign? I mean, the position is quite bad. At least you save yourself some time on the clock and you just start the next game. I think at some point, you, I don't think he will. I don't think that's a style or he's trying to game, you know, optimize the match that much. I don't think most players have that. Um, but there's definitely an argument to be made. Yeah, it, it does feel a little bit early, especially since, you know, the, the lead is... Um, yeah, I think it's a little bit early. You don't want to resign if you feel like there's still some chances. Even though, objectively, I think this is just lost. Hikaru is going to push this pawn up. His king can infiltrate infiltrate uh, via h4 to g5. So I think this one is, is pretty much gone at this point. Yeah, yeah, king's, king's coming to g5. Uh, I guess, like, what, what's Yu Yangi hoping for? You just go knight a, knight a6 and just, like, wait for black. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what he's actually playing on for, to be honest. Bishop d6, nice move by Hikaru. If the knight would have gone to a6, he could have never moved back. And now I think Hikaru is just going to move his king over to, to d3. King e2, or, or that. Wait, this ends the game right away. a7, and now king e2. d8, king e2, king e3, and it's Suzuki Swang. If you move the king, there's e6. Very nice. So... Move. Another model game, Eric, with uh, from Ikaro. He just a little bit more space. He's got the bishop pair. We saw him do doing that as well in the in the Petrov. But here he wins a, a nice game and opens up a four point lead again. Yeah, um, that, th those are the positions he's very comfortable in. Um, those slow maneuvering, low risk positions. That was that was not fun for Yu Yangi. I think I think he's going to have to definitely start. Uh, Considering a change of change of openings for certain positions, or, or as you mentioned, just looking at the situation and maybe even resigning those because time is going to be a factor pretty soon. Yeah, and Eric, I can like this must be a little bit frustrating for uh, Yu Yang Yi. Like Hikaru is messing around with a five on the first move, 
but here it actually turns out to be a completely useful move, as now there's no b4 for white hanging on to the pawn on c5, and Hikaru is very comfortable here with black, like he's definitely not worse. Yeah, no, I'd be, I'd be tilted. <laughs> I'd be, I'd be like, <laughs> how's he getting away with this? But um, Yu Yang Yi, yeah, his style, he's not going to try to blow you off the board unless it's like the principled way to play. He's going to kind of play the same, same kind of moves. He's doing that here. Although this actually makes a bit of sense. Maybe this is a good way to punish Hikaru. I guess mm -hmm. Queen D6, Knight B5 is the idea with Knight C7 check. Because if White can keep this uh, pawn on C6, then that a5 move does look silly because now we've weakened the b5 square so much yeah, so 96 so... by hikaru i think he's just gonna blockade the pawn not try to pick it up yeah. and play around it with moves like bishop d6 maybe f5 bring the queen out here can knight b5 by you and you trading off the, the knights but it definitely feels like white has an edge here the c pawn is not going away anytime soon and i think you just uh, pile up slowly but surely with moves like rook to c1 rook c1 do we, do we play g3 eventually? I mean, I want to get my knight to b5. I don't know if that's doable here. But uh, the annoying thing about this is I know Hikaru is going to play fast. He's going to play as if the position's okay. And he's just going to ask uh, White to figure out what the breakthrough is. Because, yeah, how do we how do we get rid of this blockade on c7? It should be done. Yeah. The knight should find a way to get to b5 or something. But if you don't get the knight involved, I don't see how you get rid of that bishop. Well, the more I look at it, the more it actually is starting to look fine. Black is the spawn on h4, which is extremely annoying. You can never go g3 anymore. He goes h3, but now Hikaru can perhaps double up on the g file. Here goes the white king. But I don't really see a plan for white. I mean, it, it feels like Hikaru has got things under control right now, and he's also got an edge on the clock. Yeah, I Black's going to double up on the g file, and it's just like... Maybe not double up because h4 hangs, but yeah, the pressure is definitely on on white. You're, you're you're frustrated here trying to figure out how how do I dislodge this bishop on c7? Do I bring my queen to b7 by a6? Do I double rooks? But uh, you know, sometimes you really expect the position to play itself, uh, but Hikaru just never lets that you know be the case. Yeah, it goes rook g6. He would love to go rook g8, but for now that's going to hang the pawn on h4. So it'll be interesting to see how he's going to improve the position. And the tough thing for Yu Yang Yi is that I think right now there is no meaningful plan for white. So what you just have to do is move quickly and keep time on the clock. If you're also going to fall too far behind here, at some point Hikaru is going to come up with a plan and you will not have the time to deal with it. So let's see how Yu Yang Yi will, will maneuver here. Uh-oh. 91, okay, everything's defended. All right, yeah, it, it does allow queen h2, but even queen h1 is still fine for white. Hikaru asking some tough questions here, maybe something like rook g3, attacking the rook, he goes queen e6 back, okay. Like, white's going to get chances from based on if Hikaru tries to play for a win, then white's going to get chances too. So I think for Yuyang, he almost letting black push like this. While it's like super risky, I mean, it feels like, you know, you, but at the same time, it's going to open up the position because without black pushing for a win here, you know, it wasn't entirely clear what white, white was going to do. But now we know what we're doing is white. We're making sure those pawns are stopped in the middle. I like what Ikaru is doing. You definitely don't know I want to take an e5 as then the c6 pawn is going to drop. So maybe yeah, yeah, you're going to have to move the rook back as black is threatening a fork with e4. Black gets the movie 4 in and is certainly better, but for now, I mean, White doesn't have an active plan anymore, so he's just going to have to this is, sit. This is pretty unpleasant the more I look at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Before, uh... We've made yeah, no progress as White. Yeah, White has made no progress and the pawns are dominating. This is also pretty discouraging. I mean, you feel like you have a better position, but Hikaru just effortless, effortlessly outplayed him. Yeah, that blockade just permanently, just permanent blockade. Knight he's C2. just so good at maneuvering. Okay. Okay, he's forcing the trade now, now this pawn is protected. But this pawn in G2 is so weak. How do you break through with black though? If, if white just sits, what do you do? Oh, You try to, tar you try to play yeah, bishop b4 and put the king on c7, I guess. King on c c7. Yeah, he's... And then you put your rook on g3. And, and then, maybe at the right moment you take on, on E1 and on yeah, F3. Yeah. 
But wait, Eric, this is getting very close to Zugzwang. And look at this. Now yes. you can also open up on the queen side. This is masterful from Mikaru, just controlling the pace, taking away what a all game. counterplay. Yeah, I mean, used no. White's C pawn against them, just blockaded it and used it as a as a crutch. Yeah, what a masterpiece! What a masterpiece! He blockaded that pawn, played around it, and eventually he uh, yeah completely outplayed Yu Yingyi with the white piece, and now he opened up with D three. So we know what's going to happen in the next game. In the next game, he's going to go D four. Wait, here. E4 is definitely an opportunity for, for you and E. To play E4 he and it. then E3? Yeah. Yeah. I'm... Karu's still... Yeah, I mean, he's still experimenting in the openings. But this looks good. You're just looking at... The, I'm looking at the camera, Yu Yang Yi. He's, he's like double-checking with himself. Like, I'm pretty sure this is good. And he just has to make sure he's not falling for, for something. And Hikaru has no issues whatsoever to go knight to g1. Just moving the knight back... All right, so bishop c5 by Yu and Yi. So what do you do here? Do you go e3? E3, and it's it? a bit like a hippo, yes. Right. Although e3, bishop g4 looks annoying, but maybe it's fine. Knight b3, good move by Hikaru. Uh, that's the thing. Like, you, you go e4, and against any other player, you would probably blow them off the board. But Hikaru pauses, and he finds these moves. Like, knight g1, knight b3, close the position, and uh, oh, black is better, but Hikaru, he, he's keeping it together for now. Yeah, this is probably going to be the last game in the um, in the segment if it goes according to plan. These games, I mean, the players have been st spending their sweet time. There's six minutes left, and uh, Karu's opened up a uh, five-point lead already in the match. Probably in his best interest to slow this one down. Because he has white anyways, right? If they play an extra game, it's going to be him with black. So mm -hmm. I, th I, think, I think in bullet, he's okay with that. But in blitz, he'd rather just wrap up the, the segment. Yeah, so I like Yu Yang's positions though. Uh, position though, Hikaru going f3. I think he was a little bit worried about Yu Yang Yi going for something like queenside castles, followed by g5. So he goes g4 himself. That's pretty committal. But I again, I guess he feels pretty comfortable. He's gonna go king f2 here, and just just sit. And there's no easy breakthrough for Black. Yeah, he's gonna play c3 next move unless unless Black sacks something right now, which Yu Yang Yi is definitely looking at. The problem with sacking is if you, you can't even sack on g4. There's like queen takes g4 in the end, and maybe it's not enough. I mean, yeah, maybe. But Yu Yang is definitely looking at a way to sacrifice. I'm just trying to look for full compensation because if white plays c3 next move, it's going to be uh, tough to break through. I like this counterpunch, g5. He's not letting himself be pushed around. He's attacking the 9 on the 4. And I think this trade should work out on, in Black's favor. As this king on f2 is starting to get a little bit exposed. I mean, and if you do not think, what do you do? Do you go knight h3? But perhaps then you sack, as there's no longer that bishop h3 move at the end. g5 is a good move. That's the kind of, the, you know, messing up the position, not letting Hikaru get his king settled. Like... I think that was just the key move. As you said, it's like the, he's going to sack, I think, after. Because this is going to be a better version than, uh, than without G5. Yeah, so apparently Hikaru said no more Mr. Nice Guy, but I feel like Yu Ying Yi is definitely getting chances in this game. Okay, just Bishop H7, keep the pressure on a 4. Now, do not take on a 5 because there's Bishop H3, so he moves <laughs> the king out of the way. And Hikaru firmly hangs on to the pawn. Yeah, is there some sort of Knight H5 at the right moment and trying to take the dark squares, maybe like get the queen to d6 or f6, I don't know, but I want to attack white's king. White's king is on f2, the queens are on the board. How can black put pressure on the h4 pawn, on the d4 pawn, but make the king uncomfortable? I, I, that's got to be done. Yeah, no, for sure. The bishop is on attack here, and Hikaru's going to have to make a tough decision. Do you go to h2? Well, then there might be moves like queen e7, targeting the pawn on h4 and the e3 square. Do well, you can go to d2 that hangs e uh, d4. You can go to e3, but then I think queen e7 is even better. So yes. Hikaru going in the tank here and he comes up with bishop h2, but it, it's a tough position. So, what do you, uh, yeah, queen, but queen e7, he's queen still h4 finding check. the best moves. <laughs> so, what do you do after queen takes h4 and then what, queen g5? Would you say well, or something? Queen, queen takes h4. There's bishop g5. c7 and rook h5, which still looks quite acceptable for black for white. Sorry, queen. 
Yes, yeah, rook h5, and then you just keep the rook there. Yeah, exactly. So queen e3, I like this better, king of one. Maybe just knight f6, attack the bishop on g4. So you could take and like rook e4, it looks... He takes on d4, Wait, but now take and like... a oh, bishop g1, there's knight g3. But maybe just knight rook g3, g2. king g2. Okay, Karu takes. This is so annoying, you feel like you're winning, but you're not, like... You have to go queen e2 here, takes knight g3 to keep an edge in the endgame. That's all you get. <laughs> oh yeah, queen e2, knight g3, yeah. Because after knight g3, king g2, you actually lose, because the knights under attack your queen as well. So, but queen e2 is pretty findable, because you might see knight g3, king g2, queen e2, then there's king takes g3, but you can revert the move order. Yeah, I'm sure he, he thinks there's probably more, and he's trying to look for that checkmate. He probably thinks, like, oh, I, I just don't see it. Queen e2 is an easy move to find, but psychologically, uh, you're kind of disappointed. He, and he doesn't, see, he doesn't see it. He, he do, you're no, not but now it's just gone. Out. Queen takes d4, check king just, h3. Can you just take and the there's nothing. Here? Can we just do... Yeah, king h3, the king? there's nothing. Like, yeah. you don't make this up. It, it's so but frustrating. That's, that's a little poor on you Yankees have. Like, he, this was all something he could have calculated, and he yeah. had to have told himself, like, I cannot play this. Like, this this is this is not... Is this checkmate? Check? You're gonna have to go You're gonna lose everything. And... Well, but if you do take everything, maybe Black's got some sort of perpetual, so... You gotta be a little bit careful. This game is not over yet, by the way, but yeah, he, he spent like half a minute there, so I'm a little bit surprised that he did not find Queen e2 followed by knight g3. Okay, rook h3. That's but a funny Hikaru position is sure. gonna be up a rook here. It's a bit much. You can't go rook g8 because of queen a8 check, picking up the rook. No, I mean, white, and white is winning time. here. Unless, unless you're getting mated, this is, this is a big win. Play with one second, okay, and now, okay, with makes another move with a second, but something like queen d4, and, and there we go, Hikaru just finishes it, it off very cleanly, and this is over. Or g3 nice. and resigns, yeah. Tough, Oof. tough game for Yu Yang Yi. I mean, he was doing very well up to a certain point, but he loses this game, and he goes down six points in the match, and Hikaru, he keeps messing around, he, he still goes 1a5. A5 that early on, like like wasting a move or weakening a square. I mean, it's remarkable that, that he has survived today playing it. He's really tested the limits. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I think, though, the thing, like A5, like you said, it not only wastes a move, but you also permanently weaken the B5 square. I think like most like A6, it does look pretty bad, but if after that you start playing normal chess, it's not as bad. And you do have that yeah. tilt effect where... You, you try to get away the move a6, and if you get a fine position, your opponent's like, wait, how how is the position even? My opponent played a6 on the first move. Yeah, no, this, this move is absolutely frustrating to encounter. I mean, when I think logically, when somebody plays a5, yeah, they weaken the b5 square, so maybe I want to use that. <clears throat> Otherwise, I just want to attack the king. I want to be like, look, you're, you're spending all this time pushing a queenside pawn. Can I switch gears and focus on the king side? But... It's not easy to crack. Like queen e2, queen e4 looks normal here, right? Just try to play some sort of... But Hikaru again has found a way to make it work. He pushed up the pawn to a4, now he went knight a5 to b3, and hey, he's putting pressure on the bishop, and that also puts pressure on a3 pawn. With queen h5, Eric, do you think after win, oh wait, actually I was going to say, does Yu Yang Yi want to make a draw, but maybe it just... Does that win for white, or is it just a draw? It looks like it It could win, so I wouldn't take that risk if I was black, but I don't see a win. I guess there's like rook f5 or something. Right, so then if you don't play g6, I guess you might have to play f5, but that does look pretty bad. But Hikaru, we know, he can deal with bad positions. But, but this one actually, after taking some bishop c4, I don't see a good way to defend the e6 pawn, because after yeah, rook f6, but, there's bishop g5. There's bishop g5 and queen takes g6. In some, some line, maybe. Or I don't know. So, in case Hikaru goes g6, what do you do? I guess you might just sack, and then think later, like, is there a win? Take 6, king h8, rook e3, threatens here, and after e5, there's check, king g8, and rook g3. It it looks winning for I, a while. I would sack, I would sack, I would sack. Because at the minimum, you have a draw. And uh, 
A Yuying Yi is not thinking about, can I come back right now? It's one game at a time, and a draw is not changing the, the result of the match. So he's going to get in the position and figure out if he's going to play for more, but I would, I would take, based on the Kiss. way he broke, broke it down. Queen f3 Jeez. is the other move. I'm, you don't want to play queen h6 here because of knight c1, bishop g5. But uh, yeah, queen, eight, queen f3, or maybe as you mentioned. No, but now you're just taking bishop a3 and you're, you're borderline lost. Like, like <laughs> why did he not sack? Like, you have a draw in your pocket. It looks good for white. No more confidence. He's uh, just the match is taking its toll. Yeah. The Hikaru effect. The Hikaru effect. It's tough. Yeah, now Bishop A3 and uh, Hikaru's down a minute on the clock though, but y you've got nothing here with white. Like you're down a pawn. Yes, your pieces are a little bit active, but there, there's nothing. Yeah, well, without that dark squared bishop, it's hard to imagine white as any meaningful, you know, mating ideas. Black's just going to be safe on the dark squares. Yeah, rook a7, he's going to push this pawn up to a3. Materials even, but this pawn on a3 is going to be so annoying to deal with. It's not easy at all for black to, to win this one. Uh, but, you know, Hikar will find a way to put up the pressure. Yeah, bishop goes to f6. So. It, it's really funny, Eric, how the move 1a5 has worked out for Hikaru. Like, this a pawn is probably going to win him the game. It's... It's a Hikaru thing. I wish I could get away with it, but um, he's not—he's not getting punished. Yeah. Not that it's easy to figure out what how, but. Well, I I think like we saw the line knight g six. At least you have a draw. There was rookie three. It looked very tempting. I think he just he just had to go for it. Like it's not a hundred percent clear how it's winning. But you just take a leap of faith and you either do it or you don't. Yeah. I mean, okay. what is what do you suggest here? Is that D5 or something? We try to like open up light square diagonal. Like how how is Yuyang Yi supposed to change things here? Is this idea like Bishop King G2 E8 after Rook takes D4 like or something? I, uh, so I think after takes, uh, Bishop E8 is a nice move. Maybe you take here and you just defend the end game of pawn down, which should be pretty holdable, I think. So you can also go Rook D3. And, and get there in a more forcing manner. All right, so rook d3 here, and I, I think we're going down there. I think black eventually is gonna have to take here. We trade this pair of rooks, we trade the other pair. Black takes on c5, but we go queen f3 at the end. Black is up a pawn, but it's very difficult to make use of it, because if you push those pawns, then you're gonna expose your king. So. White should be able to hold there, but, you know, we're, no, Hikaru will that. find a way. Oh. Yeah, if Black gets to push for a while, that's just... Hikaru is very good at uh, playing these pawn up positions. Okay, take the pawn. Yep. Okay. I think a clever decision by Hikaru. I think he realized that to with keep the rooks, rooks on? on the board, it's probably a draw. So maybe Yu Ying Yi should try to get them off with rook b7. I go does it this way, rook d7 now, I guess. Yeah, rook d7. Mm -hmm. Hikaru's still going to try there. Yep. So, uh, Eric, I think you take with the rook. I think you have the most chance in the queen end game. Like, four versus three with the queens. Looks like there, there are some chances. Maybe queen g5. And you just try to put the queen, yeah, queen, centralize the queen, put it on d5. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so... Definitely annoying for White to, to have to play this. So, okay, queen e4. Okay, Kara pre-moving here, gaining a little bit of time on the clock. e5. I like what he's doing. e4, e3 would open up White's king a little bit. And with the one second increment, it, it's so easy to blunder here. Yeah, I like the key for black. Not allow White to check on the long diagonal and just slowly push that pawn up the board. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you cr no. can trade queens, that's great. But uh, when do you play e4 here? As black he goes g5 okay so he's gaining some space but he's traded up one pair of pawns and now his king is a little bit more exposed so slightly surprised but maybe king of five although i think it's unlikely that you can actually put this to work king of five queen ca check i guess i have to try to stop you from crossing yeah i guess queen e6 but then you know maybe you go for a setup with like 
queen c2, e4, and there he goes, queen, king f5 on the board. So check, king, queen e6, check. And then we do play e4. Yep. Yeah. Oh, we right, have so to, to try to play on. Queen e5, annoying move, king g2, now there's always a check, queen h5. Okay, check, king g6, or there. Maybe here, queen c8. What's the goal for, for black? Is it a play e3 at the right moment, or is it get the king to a square that you can't be checked anymore? Great question. Yeah, it's it's tough. It's very tough to push these forward, because white always has, like, as long as white gives checks, it's, it's good. You know, you just check and check. So I, I honestly don't know what the plan is here for black. I think it's very difficult to push e3 at the right moment. I, I feel like He's as gonna... long as Yu Yang Yi keeps a decent amount of time on the clock, he should not lose. No, the the uh, queen should have enough checking space the rest of the game. There's not enough pawns to, to cover. Okay, he I Karu. Mean, uh... Karu yeah. upping the speed though. Like he's anticipating Yu Yang Yi's e three. Queen e three. And I think you just take the queen, no? Isn't that a draw? Is You're he worried about... G4. Was he worried about... Yeah, no, it looks good. It's the only chance, though. Okay, king of four. two, king of six. And bring six. the king to e4. Okay, king here. King e5? King e2. Yeah. Yeah, king and c2. King and it's just, a, it's just a draw, yeah. King d3, wait, he caught playing for a loss here, even though... <laughs> king d6, he... Yeah. <laughs> he finds it instantly. He finds... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not happy. Oh, I have to make a draw here. Okay, king of five, but yeah, it's a pretty easy, easy draw, of course. There's some airplane noises in my background. It's because there's an air show in Toronto this weekend. So in case people hear that, don't live by the airport. They're just uh, practicing. Hikaru running down the clock. You got to be a little bit careful, though, playing with one second. I think Yu Yang Yi, you just do the stillmate as quickly as possible to give yourself some more time. Or, well, it actually doesn't matter because this is the last game in a 3 plus 1 portion anyway. Yeah, no, they're, maybe Yu Yang is just getting some confidence in uh, playing the, the pawn up position, but the result's not in doubt. Yeah, so that wraps up the 3 plus 1 portion, ladies and gentlemen. Hikaru has a 6 point lead going into the bullet where we only think he's going to get stronger. So it's, it's looking tough for the Chinese superstar, but uh, you never know in bullets. Yeah, and I wanted to take a moment there, Benjamin, to thank AG1, a new partner of the Speed Chess Championships. Um, AG1 is your daily support of key health functions, and the, uh, mental performance, energy, immune system. It's the one product that does the work of many. And to find out more, uh, the audience can just visit drinkag1.com uh, slash chess or use exclamation mark AG1 in the put your YouTube chat uh, to find out more information. So thank you to AG1 for sponsoring the Speed Chess Championships. Right, so let's have a quick look. We saw the scorecard there, Hikora having a six point lead. And uh, yeah, I mean, mental performance is super important in chess. We see Hikaru, when he loses the game, he doesn't tilt, he just bounces back. And uh, that's what we've been seeing in, in this match, Eric. He's been fooling around in some games, but other games have just been pure masterclasses. Yeah, there's one last segment for Yu Yang Yi to try to equalize. That is the final bullet portion, which is going to resume after this break. Chess Kid is fun. Chess is great for the brain, but it's also fun to play. And Chess Kid makes it easy to have fun. Whether your child is a total beginner or a prodigy, they can hop on and find a well-matched opponent from around the world at any time. Chess Kid is the safe, parent-approved way for your child to play chess online. Chess Kid is educational. To kids, it feels just like playing, but chess is a great way to learn patience, strategy, and critical thinking. Chess Kid features a comprehensive training program that guides kids to level up on their way to mastery. There are more than 50,000 chess puzzles and a whole library of entertaining videos that teach strategies, tactics, openings, and end games specifically for kids. Chess Kid is easy. 
Whether you're a parent helping your child, a coach managing dozens of kids, or a school of hundreds, signing up is free and easy, so what are you waiting for? Did you know you can add emoji to your online games and analysis boards? Simply click on the emoji palette icon, select your emoji, and left click on the board. You can choose from a host of notations, animations, emoticons, and even your favorite chess personalities. Emoticons will fade away after a few seconds. However, notations and special animations remain on the board until they are cleared. To clear them, simply left click on the emoji or hit the clear all button at the bottom of the palette. Have fun. Try them all on chess.com.
and welcome back. We are following round one of the 2023 Speed Chess Championships sponsored by Coinbase. And today's matchup, Karo Nakamura is taking a 12 to 6 lead into the final bullet portion. Benjamin, besides like we've all the games, but what are the players actually playing for today? Yeah, the players are playing for a pretty hefty price hunt. So in this matchup, we uh, know that the, the winner will get um can, we'll get three thousand dollars and another three thousand dollars will be split by percentage so right now yu yang yi is uh, has half the amount of points of you of uh, of hikaru so if this would be the final score yu yang yi still takes what is it eric help me out like look it's a percentage uh, of a score, thousand right? a thousand is that how normal yeah yeah he gets a thousand There's a minimum hikaru prize and it's not uh, it's not double elimination like some tournaments, right? So this is like it is as one one shot there, but um, one hundred fifty thousand dollars in prizes, Benjamin. It's definitely one of the largest online events. Yeah, no, for sure. And uh, yeah, no, it's unfortunate for Yu Yang Yi that he's gonna probably get knocked out in the first round. But you know, like a thousand bucks for a couple of hours of chess, it you know it, it can can be worse, but. And uh, as we speak, the games are going to get underway pretty soon. Hikaru, you know, he's he's vibing there. I guess he might be listening to some music. But uh, yeah, it's only going to go up from here. In the, in the later rounds, they're going to be competing for a pretty, pretty hefty uh, price. And in the final, they're going to be playing for $30,000. Just uh, tough luck to draw there for Yu Yang Yi, though. I mean, he's facing the defending champion. Um, so, yeah, I mean, only a miracle is going to gonna help him here this is hikaru's i mean i would say one plus one hikaru's excellent at that time control he doesn't really have any weaknesses when you look at the three time controls but um this is where he should have a huge uh there should be a huge skill gap between him and yu yang yi with just one minute on the clock and we have more disrespect by hikaru he opened up with e3 followed by g3 it's actually kind of funny eric i was yesterday at the st louis chess club and I played someone who played F3, E5, G3, D5, and then played G4. Like, it's it's funny that even if you're a beginner, like, they, they still find the, the worst moves. But Hikaru having not a great position here. I mean, Yu Ying Yi having the open G fall to attack. So that reminded you of Hikaru a bit, you know? Or right. Unfortunately, <laughs> do, he doesn't do that against us. He plays bad no, moves, but then no, he, he follows up with good ones. No, Hikaru is very good at sensing the momentum in a match. Like... He wouldn't just play something that really gives amazing winning chances and gets the opponent back in the game. Part of it's psychological. You, at this point, he doesn't want Yu Yang Yi to get any points because you just play worse. When you go a prolonged period without getting a win, your opponent's not blundering, you just start believing a lot of those negative thoughts like, oh, I can't play today, or oh, I'm not in form. And it's a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. So he's still making life as difficult as possible for Yu Yang Yi, even though the positions are rich. Yeah, Bishop G4 by Yu Yang Yi. Perhaps he just has to go like H4, H3, but I think Koro can just sit with King H2. Because, you know, the King on H1 is safe for now. Black would love to throw that H1 away, but unfortunately you can't. And now Hikaru is opening up that long diagonal, so he's not doing too bad here at all. Wait, Knight of 7. No, I mean, it's just game over. <laughs> yeah. King is safe. <laughs> This is as frustrating as it gets. The king on h2 is completely safe. You just take an h8, you go e6, and there's nothing. e6, bishop takes e6. Maybe he didn't like, so you're just going to trade the queens first. Yeah. Yeah, pawn takes f6, rook e5. It, it's just over. You're done. A clean That's exchange. No counterplay. Yeah. And look at the clock. He's got double the amount of time that Yu Yang Yi has. Trying to read into Yu Yang Yi's body language, but uh, he's not given much. He's, he's kept the same look throughout. Yeah, no, that's definitely a good thing. So, okay, bishop g4. We see knight at g5 by Yu Yang Yi. But I think Hikaru is happy to trade of those bishops. Now, you're just going to have to go back. And he's going to go for e6. Then probably slowly but surely prepare to c5 break. Yeah, once once black plays e6, there's no real comfortable breakthrough for, for white. But at least here, Yu Yang Yi is probably going to, like, Put a knight to e4 and fight for some of those dark squares. At least there's some squares. You just got to get rid of black's dark squared bishop. If you can do that, then uh, then you can have some fun on d6. Right, but it's going to be super difficult to do there. Hikaru offering the trade of queens. Yu Yang Yi doesn't want any of it. 
and now Hikaru goes g5. Like, looking at the score right now, Benjamin, do you think Yuan Yi is underperforming, overperforming, or it's about as ex expected? 13%. I think he's underperforming slightly. I think, you know, if you look at the ratings, well, Hikaru is outrating him quite a lot in Bullet, but in, in Blitz, he was outrating him by 200 points. So then a score of like 12 to 6 is pretty much normal according to rating. Yeah. However, given the positions that Yu Yingyi uh, got, I think he should have scored a, a bit more points. Got it. Okay, Rook of 1. So 9 and 3 is kind of interesting. On one hand, it's good. On the other hand, it can also get trapped over there. E3, C5, black. Black's getting too much counterplay here. This is just too passive for, for uh, white. At least that's that's my first uh, impression. Yeah, King B8. And here's the thing. Hikaru maneuvers and then pauses at the right moment. He takes and goes Rook C8. Okay, Queen B1 here. Again, this 9 on D3 is a little bit loose, but I don't see a way to attack it. Yeah, the tactics. Oh, Knight F3. Trying to desperately win that knight on d3, even okay. you know at, at the cost of of, uh, of the f3 square. But uh, it feels like there should be some in between move for black. I don't know some sort of knight takes b2 or something. But we'll see. I actually like it for white because wait what? Whoa! Hikaru. Oh, he expected queen takes and he had queen three takes. moves. Queen takes d3. <laughs> Very random. That's a that's just a random pre move. There should be seven, and that's the game. All yeah. right. Okay, so Yu and Yi wins this one. That's very. That's yeah. That, that's really odd by Hikaru because Rook takes D three actually was the better move, and he goes G four. Even more disrespect. Yeah. No, in bullet anything can happen, uh, especially in like one game. Mouse slip or Hikaru there. Just anticipated a different move, but over over the course of the thirty minutes, it's gonna be gonna be very tough to to get that to happen again. Mm -hmm. King of pawn. By the way, Eric, it was pretty funny. Knight h four would have trapped the rook on g six. Yes, it was missed by Ikaru. Black still has a very nice position. I mean, Black's king over White's king over there is a little bit exposed. Uh, but you know, White's got some pressure on the center, so maybe it isn't too bad. Hikaru's doing this, on, he's just asking, but he's playing very, yeah, he's doing this on purpose. Some of these moves are, this is, uh, this is having fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so Not castling, six. pushing the center, sacrificing pawns. Knight F, yeah, yeah, knight check. But you pick up then, the knight on, on G6, so... What, what do you think it is with Hikaru? Is it just like all of his experience playing uh, online chess that, you know, he has been trying this out for a while or what, or he just wants to t t toy with his food? Like, what is it? Maybe he just wants to toy with the food a little bit. Uh, yeah, I mean, he, he felt comfortable enough in the match that he was okay doing this. Like, against certain players, he, he wouldn't be able to do this. And that's why he's yeah, trying it here. I mean, we see Magnus. Magnus sometimes plays, uh, especially online, different opening choices. The players, sometimes they just want to mix things up, especially if you can afford to. Um, mm -hmm. And here, he can definitely afford to. Hikaru down a piece for the moment. He, he might win it back in the next couple of moves. Yu Yang Yi sacks it back. And now he's up how many pawns? Four? It's quite a lot. Rook E2 or Knight G5 both look winning. G5, Rook or Knight E4. He's got to win this game, even though he's down on clock. B6. Just make a move. Just create some move for the king. Yeah. Yes, Hikaru's creating content, as some chat members <laughs> said. There's other <laughs> motivations. Content yeah. number one. Yeah, if you're feeling black, just run the king to A4. Bring the king out. No yeah, more. Just king B7. Uh, Everything just... is defended. I mean, but now white is permanently pinned. Although he finds a way to unpin <laughs> himself, but. I love that. King B5, yeah, he finally did it. That's but this is gone. This is over. King A4, King A4, C5. You pick up the pawn. I'll be shocked if Yu Yi does not win this one. But we've seen, no, we've seen where the things. Yeah. Okay, Hikaru fighting. Like, he finds these moves like <laughs> Rook J not having to resign right away. Okay, it's still a game. <laughs> and he should have kept the Rook on the 7 rank. Now he, there's yes. chances. King a4 though, king a4 and you're pinned. You can sack right. or move there. 
Sack. Just sack. Hikaru is so slippery. Don't, yeah, don't. Sack, yeah, sack, take. King b3 and take. Look at all those pawns. <laughs> no, but now it's over. Right? Yeah. And he wins. Yeah. Uh, we have to remember that Hikaru is not a chess player. Okay, he is like 2780, number three in the world. But yes, he's not a chess player. And on stream, he always plays chess. All right, anyway... We've got another funny opening here with the move a5. Definitely looking good for white, right? Yes. I mean, by what I know, that a5 move is is uh, is sloppy. I mean, you're it shouldn't be good. White should be able to take advantage of it, put something on b5, but still getting away with it. Mm -hmm. I think if you're you youngy here, you definitely don't mind that Hikaru is messing around, you know? Because uh, yeah, like we said earlier, uh, the format. Um, is, is such that if you score more wins, you, you get a little bit more prize money. So you can also play someone who, 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 who doesn't have any mercy, who wants to win every single game and doesn't mess around. But here, you know, Yu Yang is at least probably going to go out with a more respectable score. Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, we've seen some very one-sided matches. And I wouldn't say today is super one-sided. Hikaru's always been in the lead and, like, never in doubt. But uh, it's 13 to 8. I mean, most players, even very strong GMs, would be happy with that ratio against Hikaru. Uh, yeah. Obviously, I don't think anybody's going to be happy getting eliminated here, but you asked me before the match. Yeah, this is, uh, this is about as expected. Yeah, and I think we've also seen matches that have gotten way worse. It would have, be, would have been something like 20 to 5 or like, uh, I don't know, like uh, 22 to 3. You know, that, that's not a score mm -hmm. you want to lose by. So, no. like, getting eight points on the scoreboard is, is acceptable against Hikaru. That being said, it's looking pretty tough in this game. Yeah, those knights are dancing in. So there should be some sort of, I don't know, queen okay. e6 or something. That's a bit surprising by Hikaru to trade it. It gives white a little bit more breathing room. King h2. Okay, goes queen g2. Hikaru is setting up all sorts of forks here. And can you actually... There's a lot, there's a lot of forks coming. Yeah, this is not a fun position to play. <laughs> Hikaru and his Hikaru knights, man. <laughs> Bishop g4 stopping the... Oh, but h5... He's going to go h5, h4, right? Knight f4. h5, h4. Or knight f4. Yeah, if, yeah knight f5 now. No, it's all falling apart. Now, this is going to be a win for Hikaru. Just take with any piece and you win. Bishop d3, knight h5, and you keep dancing around. No, this this one is gone. Oh, and he I'm takes the look. deep. Yeah, that. Check. That this is over. Yeah. And then Queen F two is checkmate. Nicely done. And of course, he had it pre-moved. All right. Yeah, Hikaru's uh, won the last five SCCs. That's pretty consistent. Yeah. Now, to be fair, Magnus was not playing for a while, right? He didn't play in twenty twenty one. He didn't play in twenty twenty. Did Magnus play in twenty nineteen? I thought he might have, and maybe he lost to MVL, but am I hallucinating, or was that last year or something? I thought That was in 2020, Magnus, yeah, yeah. In 2020, Magnus he lost, lost to MVL in the semis. Okay. So, he, yeah. But did he not play in 2019? Because I think I have definitely... To check. I, I, I think don't think he played every a, year. Yeah, there was definitely a period where... Magnus who just beat Hikaru in the in the SCC. Like he beat him in 2016, 2017, I believe. Um the years thereafter it was all Hikaru, but maybe he, Magnus was not playing. Yeah. Alright. In the meantime, Hikaru up. Uh no materials even, but he's got the bishop pair to better pawn structure. That being said, you have to watch out for some tactics. The pawn in e4 saying, but e5, nice move to keep it all under control. Yeah, this is a dream position for the two bishops. You can go e6, you can keep kicking this knight away, but uh, there's a big attack coming. a3 maybe? Yeah, so I guess a3 go is where we're going, knight a6, knight point. c5. Yeah. I really want to play e6, but I'm not seeing it work yet. Okay, here, bishop takes h6 is uh, on top. But yeah, yeah this is a tough position. This is one of his with. best positions. It takes the pawn, okay. 
I see five. Bishop C2. There's another. Okay. If you took there was knight D3. Yeah. Yeah. But Eric, look. Oh, there goes the bishop, but Icar doesn't see it. This is the thing. You look at the clock, and Icar is just up like 30 seconds. He makes every move instantly. Bishop E4, then Bishop. Yeah. No, this is over. Wait. But if you take this check and add a four, you can't do that. Wait, uh, wait, take and add a four. And that's another game for you. He's doing a different move order. Is it game over? I w you're saying another game for you, and Yi. I think Hikaru could still come up with something here. Yeah, it's still a little bit early to, to call it. Yeah, yeah, like, okay, take. Rook C8, and then check. He's gonna go bishop, and then his king might get made it, though, right? We have to watch out yeah, for Yeah, but. Okay, f5, nice move. f5 is I nice. f5 is take. very nice. Take. And then bring the king in or something. Yeah. Okay. What is, rook this B1. is nice. Bishop e5. But now the king is crawling out. King g3. King of four. King of four. King of four. Okay, you have to rook take. check. King g3, maybe. Is, can you get checkmate? Yang yi. Check. I don't, I don't see it. No, this one is slipping away. It's a... Okay, he goes king e3 to fight for the win. Oh. Good. Okay, and rook careful. e5. G4. And now Hikaru is... Uh... <laughs> Hikaru is probably going to win this one somehow. He's probably... Yeah, yeah. But wait, how? Two seconds. King... He's got no time. That's a tough issue. Wait, how do you play on it? If you there lose is one point, second increment. Yeah. Rookie shade. But you gotta move, gotta move. Play with point two, and now e6. he's... What? He made two moves in a row. A5. Five seconds on the clock. A5. A5. King e4. Take, 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 take. King c5, king c5. King b6. Oh, now you're take. winning. But, wait, he played with there we go. points. There's increments, right? So. Okay, pre-move, pre-move, pre-move. Just pre-move, gain some time on the clock, and then... He's not gaining enough time here with the... Uh, <laughs> he's scaring me a bit. Yeah, this is... This is a very geez, slow ladder. He keeps ladder. moving with one second. Just but it's... Uh... <laughs> I think as you, Young Yi, you're happy that Hikaru resigned there, because I was not 100% sure he was going to win. That's a win for you, Yang Yi. Uh, yeah, Hikaru's definitely not focused on running up the score this match. He's still playing, we can say, trashy openings, getting away with it. Yep, yeah, like I don't understand that he'd be to move 8-5 at all. Yeah, like you just waste the tempo and you weaken your position. But, you know, it's not too bad right now. Yu Youngi is better. And uh, right now it's it's back to five points. You know, mathematically, Yu Youngi could still come back. But you need a couple wins in a row. Yeah, he needs to win every game. The next uh, next five. I guess right. there, yeah, there's probably about five, six games left in the match. Yeah, but there will be a point where, like, if Yu Youngi wins this game as well... Hikaru is, uh, he's probably going to play more seriously again. Uh, but looking at Hikaru's bingo card, he's played, has he played every move yet? Or does he still need to play like knight h3 and knight e3? Yeah, I haven't seen his bingo card or what the goals are, but it seems like he played what he wanted to already. Like he hasn't started, he hasn't switched it up as much lately. So maybe he completed it. Yeah, I'm kind of curious. So let me... Check real quick, because I know he's played G4. I mean, I assume, like, if you play G4, you, you're not afraid to go H4 as well. Um, let's see. So, he, okay, so last game was G3. So the next game, he's going to start with H4 or H3. And after that, the Knights will come out. But the uh -huh. question is, Eric, will he actually manage to complete it? Like, he still has to go H4, H3, Knight H3, Knight F3, Knight A3, Knight C3. That's it's a little hard. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. In the meantime, it looks like he's winning this game. He's going to be up two pawns, and these uh, these queenside passes are going to be pretty tough for White to deal with. Now this one, this one is gone. Yeah, a four. I'm just a little jealous of uh, Yu Yangyi that Hikaru's uh, giving him all these playable positions, giving him a chance to to catch up a bit. Yeah, and and also giving him an extra bit of cash, you know, given the yes, some that, cash uh, as well. Exactly, yeah. he's getting. Getting cash, <laughs> Yang Yi will earn more money based on more wins. And uh, yep. we're seeing some more wins in this bullet portion. Hikaru's taking some liberties here. 
Yeah, queen a5 attacking the rook. Yeah, this, this again, a5, a e5. He's showing why a5 is a good move. I'll move on. Queen b4 and it's over. Yeah, that's game. All right, so Ikaru opens up a six-point lead again. And uh, yeah, next game, he's going to start with uh, h4 or h3. Which one is going to be Eric? Oh, he goes f4. Wait, he hasn't played that, that one yet? Maybe I have a soft he, spot he for, the, for the bird. I have a soft spot. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to see it. Yeah. Maybe he skipped it like he went from f3 to g3 and g4. Yeah. Now, the, I saw you were doing a speed on The bird is still pretty acceptable, right? As you play a reverse yeah. uh, Dutch. Exactly. Hikaru is a pretty good Dutch player already. So getting a better version of it, he's pretty experienced. Mm-hmm. And already I kind of like his position, given the fact that black is this weak g5 square. Uh, Hikaru going for a3, I guess he wants to follow up with b4. Sometimes when I watch somebody play Hikaru, it's like, oh, could I have done, a, done better? But this score is pretty respectable uh, against Hikaru, who's, yeah, uh, I mean, the five-time reigning champion. So. Yeah, and if you get nine so, points on, on the scoreboard, you're only behind by a six point margin. I think <clears throat> most people wouldn't mind that in a in a blitz match against Hikaru. No, no, they wouldn't. Because <clears throat> uh, I think we've all seen worse. <laughs> in you know the receiving end. Yep, it's uh, it's tough. It's tough. All right, so h four by Hikaru. I think a nice move to lock up the king's time. Maybe now knight of three, adding some protection to that h four pawn. He goes knight a five. He's he's really asking for it, Eric. Can Black just go for? I think. Okay, goes a six. Okay. Yu Yang is not now he's going for it. Yeah, like there hasn't always been that sense of urgency today. It's hard to do. He's running bishop g3, queen h4 mate. That's that's fun, I guess. Um <laughs> Okay, but, but this is good. Knight f4, rook g8. But how do you put this one away? Let's say why goes rook b1. Like or I don't know. It's seven. frustrating how fast Yukaru will just respond here with the move. And he'll be like, I'm yeah. sure there's checkmate. I just don't see it. So knight yeah. h3, knight f2 is not mate. Like, I don't know. Uh, you do but... have a draw though, but nothing more as far as I can see. Yeah. <clears throat> but we can't accept a draw here. This is... Uh... This is personal for you, Yangi. <laughs> okay, queen g3 maybe just attack. Everything yeah, that, you know, we know about chess, it feels like this should be good. Oh, but... oh there goes a full rook. There goes a full yes, rook. Yes, okay, so that we understand that. But, but it's not too far it. away. He's Wait, not going to see it. Hikaru is going to win this. He queen b5 and queen c6 or something. He's going for it, Benjamin. I'm surprised Check. that Yu Yang Yi did not see it. Like, sometimes you have these games of like 400s, and you know that this is not in their field of vision. But you would He's expect gonna... Yu Yang Yi to see a free rook. Is he going to play knight c6, knight e5? Okay, this game is Check. not over yet, by the way. King b7. What do you do after that? Like, everyone in the chat is like, yes, I didn't see that rook. Like, it was too far away. But 97, now, it oh, seems over. That's nasty. That's nasty. Karu gets away with it uh, again. Yep, and he wins on time. It's going to be a queen c6 check or queen takes g8, but just overwhelming. Okay, so let's uh, keep going. At this again. point, we know for sure Hikaru's in his head. You know, you just right. can't avoid it at some point. Like, I'm shocked that he didn't see the hanging rook on a2. I, I wish I could say I was, but uh, he was just trying to fix <laughs> tunnel vision. The Hikaru effect, the Hikaru effect. Yeah. Okay, this looks terrible. You've given up your light squared bishop, your best minor piece in the in the King's Indian. You've permanently weakened your, your, your queen side. But, you know, it's not that bad, as a5 is making it difficult to try to break through. And now he's trading off the dark for I'm bishops. surprised he allowed bishop h6. I thought white was going to go queen d2. This is like the only idea for black is trade off the dark square bishops and bring your king to g7 and just hold. So I was a little surprised that. Uh... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hikaru yeah, is really, really frustrating to play in these positions. Because now like, black's doing quite okay. Like, if black black's gets doing some quite okay, in... yeah. Jordan played the system like this uh, in Germany last week uh, against Blue Bomb uh -huh. in a similar position. And uh, he was doing very well. Yeah, like, 
The pawn on d6, you only have one knight that can attack it. You can't add more pressure, whereas, so, it's very hard for white to come up with any sort of breakthrough. And you don't want to play f4 because then black takes and puts a knight on e5. So, this dark square complex is uh, pretty effective. And Eric, look at the clock. Hikaru's got one minute. He made all of the moves on increment. Like, he doesn't spend any time. He just maneuvers so effortlessly. Now, I think black's doing fine here, but I don't really see a clear way to make further progress. Do you have any ideas? No, no just wait no. for white. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. The pressure, yeah, the pressure should just be on white to do something. All right. Yeah, generally, that's a good strategy in bullet. Like, you're not gonna, you know, force yourself yeah. to break through somehow. You just, you know, sit and wait for your opponent to do something silly. They would open up the position for you. And there we see a five. Koro got tired of waiting. And actually, what about this, 1976? He's probably going to sack the exchange at the right moment, but I think White has to go for that anyways. No, no more knight c7. <laughs> we missed our chance. Yep. Okay, the king steps back to h8. Maybe now so rook So is going to put a rook on g7. Mm -hmm. g4. Trade everything. Okay, I'm surprised that Yu Yingyi didn't take with the e-rook. But again, like the, the time knight is on so g8 tough. is is gonna go to f7, and you don't have to defend d6 long term. So they go they go down this end game, but who? Wait, knight a4 picks up the d6 pawn. Yeah. Take. Oh, but there's knight That's, h5. Okay. <laughs> He's still. He was like, on. how do you found? He was just in time. It just always happens like this. Right, right in time to defend b6. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it just feels unfair, you know. Like, and now he goes b five and he's winning. He's like it all win. falls apart. Knight b six and your knight, entire knight center collapses. Oh wait, but king of two. Wait, there was an opportunity there by Yu and Yi. Okay, it's not bishop g six. It's not over. Yeah, there goes the f pawn. Why it's still some passage. They're not connected. They're not the prettiest pawns, but they're pawns. Yeah, this is a very funny looking position. Four pawns in the middle, but you can't push any of them. We should be That's six. A bit of a funny... uh, but the oh, pawns oh, are going to be. This is now. Now the pawns are pushing. Now you're dead. <laughs> now yeah, you're... e three two and your queen would. And then d three. Oh, this is brutal. The avalanche of pawns. Ugh. Yeah, another tough the loss king. for Yu and Yi, and Hikaru wins another game. He goes d four. Wait, he he did he had not played d four yet. No, this is yeah regular Catalan. My eyes aren't used to it. No, you would expect Hikaru to have a pawn on h4 or something. But yeah, we have a very normal position here. Just standard theory. Should be four. Oh, there we have h4. He just had to do it. He just had to do it. <laughs> like h4, he just had to, he just had to do it. It's eight, eight points with, uh, with three and a half minutes. The only way to, to catch up is if uh, your opponent just resigns. Mm hmm Yeah, so Queen B8. Yu and Yi doing well in this game, though. He's up a pawn. I don't think Hikaru has sufficient compensation, but it's not easy to deal with, uh, you know, the white's bishops here. But I think you have to play lot of pawns. You're... Those are a lot of pawns. Yeah, yeah. Just take on E4 and... Uh... You're up three. <laughs> okay, take, maybe. Just trade off one of the bishops. Can yeah. he put this one away? Queen c5? Where do you put the queen? I think here. Okay, queen so that c5. You can recapture the queen. So queen takes. The spawn is hanging. But, yeah. again, to put this one away is not easy. Take the knight's going to go to c... F oh yeah, you take there. Queen e4, though. Nice move by Hikaru. Queen b7. He keeps finding all of these annoying moves. Queen e5. Looks like a nice centralizing move. Or here. He's going for knight g4 here. Knight g4 is pretty annoying. Queen's gonna go to g2. Okay, that's a nice move. You can't go knight g4 because of queen takes e8, but that's Queen e2 annoying. looks off. It looks like a step in the wrong direction. Black's like, still having a what? great is position. Rookie six? Take him bishop to d4. Trade. Hikaru might trade and play, yeah. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Maybe knight h7 to g5? Or just h5? Okay, now your knight doesn't have a good square. Maybe. And you lose the c pawn. Hikaru is gonna like push this somehow. Queen He's gonna G2 try to win. So. Check G two. G two. Yeah. Yeah. Check. G2, check as we have well, maybe. I think you have to keep the king of three. King of three. Oh, he's just blundering. I mean, 
even just basic stuff like that. Just tired. The match yeah. is just accumulated. That's a tough loss. He he should not have lost this one. He he <laughs> should have won this one as a matter of fact. But even this one slipped away from Yu Ying Yi. So let's see how he will try to recover. And Eric, with one minute and fifty seconds on the clock, this could be our last game. Yeah, this probably will be our last game, and probably couldn't come soon enough for Yu Yang. He just never really found himself in the match. Had some good games, but Hikaru's like consistency is, is, is a bit much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and let's have a look at the score. He's probably you know still gonna pick up a thousand bucks from this match. Uh, again, not the worst thing in the world. Uh, but of course it's very frustrating if your opponent plays a5 on the on the first move and, and just beats you with double the score. This is yeah, this is the premier event and uh, it is Yu Yang Yi's first year playing in the SEC. So um, you know, despite the result, uh, valuable experience. Maybe he's gonna play a bit more online. I don't see him usually play Title Tuesday or, or some of those events, so um, Definitely need some experience uh, to, to take down guys like Yukaro. It's going to take yeah, a lot of lot of matches. Yeah, he's got a nice position here, though. I mean, <clears throat> with both knights in the middle, maybe knight to c5. That being said, again, like, Hikaru doesn't mind getting such an ugly position, and then he just sits. But eventually, it's got to crack for, for, for Black, I would It's think. supposed to crack. Like, Hikaru's mixing plans. He's pushing the each pawn to h4, but then he's like, you know... Got all these passive pawns on c6 and e6. It this should be like winning for white. It feels like Hikaru's yeah. just testing him. Yeah, okay, so we see a trade. But you know, he's still he's still hanging on. It's quite frustrating. Like that there's no immediate win for white. Okay, four's a nice move though. Four. Maybe knight g4. And we're preparing knight g4, right? Bring the queen in. Yeah. yeah that makes sense. The stop queen of force Hikaru goes king g8. Of course he sees so knight that. Knight g4 anyways. Let's go to h4. Yep. Queen g7. Queen, queen h8. Queen okay. H8. And if you okay, take the pawn, take the pawn, and just move back and play the play yeah. the game. Yes, yes. But we're still defending everything. Knight g oh no, knight g4. There's f5. So bring the rook back. But then you again. hang e6. So that's why he moved the rook back. Yeah. The one thing though is that yeah, you're gonna have to be careful not to hang this pawn because if you hang the pawn on c3, you can hang the pawn on a2, and then again. That a pawn could win the game. Is he gonna go five? It looks too much. I mean, you the queen is win just moving game. between h8 and f6. The queen is just back and forth. Knight g4. Just... I still don't see the breakthrough, and you have to watch out for the c3 pawn. Yeah. Okay, take, we got take. some trades in. Okay, knight g4. Wait, knight g4. Wait, now all of a sudden it's not too bad. F5. Wait, you can get your own rook trapped. Wait, there's F. Bring the knight back. But You're worried about G5 F though, right? G5? F5? F5? G... Not G5. Oh, G5 is rook H7. Got it. Yeah. So the rook's not trapped. Be careful. Don't hang the queen side. Wait, this rook is... The rook is almost trapped on, on H4. The rook is almost trapped. Oh, you can take on C3 here. Oh, Hikaru's probably going to win this one. This is This is so frustrating. Queen G do you try to trade queens? Okay, well, queen G7. Now you have to, and he's going to lose on the queen side. Yeah, okay, now you are losing. E5 is coming at some point, I'm guessing. And there it is. Takes. And then what? Takes. I think you just lose. Bishop takes A2, Bishop D5. No, this is over. Bishop, Bishop D5 and A2. Bishop D5 and A2. Tough Very loss for like game. Yingi. There's complications, <laughs> he ends up on top. Yep. No, that's frustrating. I think that finishes it. Uh, 20 to 9. Is that the final score for uh, this SEC initial it's, match? It's 19 or to 9. He wins by a 10 point uh, margin. So, pretty convincing win. You know, not the worst score for Yu Yang Yi, but again, given the fact that uh, he got so many good positions, he must feel a little bit frustrated that he couldn't convert more into a full point. But again, that's the Ikaru effect. He keeps hanging on there. He doesn't lose and all of a sudden he, he turns uh, these games around yeah Hikaru was never really in danger this match and never really was once he started with like a three four point cushion and never uh got smaller than that and definitely felt like he was just very comfortable handling handling his opponent here just routine for Hikaru this is just another day uh, another day of work these initial rounds of the of the SEC
Yep, so yeah, he gets a pretty convincing win in this one. And he is going to play in the next round against the winner of Fabiana Caruana and Noirbek Abdu Satorov. Yeah, I mean, that matchup, by the way, the, that round, Caruana versus Abdu like, I'm not sure Noirbek or Fabiano, who is the favorite. Because, like, Fabi's improved a lot online, but Noirbek did win the World Rapid Championships. And I always get the feeling, I don't know about you, Benjamin, that, like, it's going to need some younger new players to take down Hikaru. Like, Hikaru or Magnus, like the two top online speed chess players, I don't think it's going to be from Magnus' generation. I, I would, if I was betting, I'd be betting on like, you know, a Gukesh or a Nihal or Norderbeck, like one of the newer, newer players. Right, so uh, yeah, no, that one's definitely going to be a close matchup. Very tough to say who's the favorite. But with all that being said, Eric, let's have a quick look at our savvy, uh, savvy move of today. Yes, we do have the savvy moves presented by Coinbase. You're going to be reviewing a key move from today's match, right? Yeah, so this was played in one of Hikaru's White's games. So the game was looking pretty even for, for most of the game, but here Hikaru find, found a nice tactical shot. He traded off his bishop for Black's Knight on c5, and after Yu Yang Yi recaptured, now he unleashed knight e5 check. He checks the king, attacks the bishop, black has to take. But after this trade, the material is still even, Eric. But all of black's pawns are weak, this pawn on a4 is weak. And also black's pieces are super passive. So Hikaru managed to win quite a convincing game here. King f6 game, king d3, rook d8, king c3. And the problem really for Yu Yang Yi was that his bishop on b7 was just lacking any squares. So Hikaru pushes him back with rook c7, he picks up the pawn on a4, and after g5, he just keeps the king side closed with g3, and there's just nothing black can do. So after king b6, uh, sorry, bishop b5, king g6 and a4, Yu Yang Yi just uh, resigned. So that was your savvy moment presented by Coinbase. Yeah, I thought that was nice, just showing Hikaru's total control uh, over the game. Indeed. And so, I think we are going to move to a break while we prepare for an interview with the winner of today's match, Shikara Nakamura. Mm Chess is coming to chess.com. Enchant your pieces with one of two spells, jump or freeze. Players start with two jump spells and five freeze spells, which recharge after five moves. You may cast your spell whenever you wish before making a regular chess move. Jump is a spell cast to one square, wherein if there is a piece on that square, other pieces can jump over the charmed piece. The freeze spell is cast over a 3 by 3 square area, and the pieces in this area are temporarily frozen in place. Combine your powers of chess and sorcery to defeat your opponent. Come see what Supercell and Chess.com have cooked up in our new variant, Spell Chess, dropping on September 1st. <laughs>
Welcome back everyone. We're joined by Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura who is here for some comments after his first round match versus Yu Yang Yi. Thanks for joining us, Hikaru. Yeah, it's good to be here. Well, I noticed um, there's different opening choices today, uh, especially with your white games. You were mixing things up. Was that part of a, a bingo or personal challenge, the, the opening choices? Uh, I think mainly I just or didn't just want to, to mix uh, study for the match. So I, so I felt like playing all kinds of random stuff all over the place. And um, it's, it seemed to work out pretty well for me. Like I just, just played different first moves and it was all good. Very smooth. Yeah, Hikaru, is that in winning the match. Oh, do you feel like you, you gave it your all in this match or do you feel like you were toying with your food a little bit, so to speak? Well, you know, I think the thing is that um, a lot depended on the start. If, if the match had been really close or I'd gotten behind, then I think certainly I would have had to switch it up. But I, I think that there were there was a very critical moment. It's funny because obviously I was streaming it and I, I sort of oh, said I this game where I think I was ahead two and a half, one and a half. And I had the uh, black pieces in this, um, this this Spanish, which I ended up winning from a position where I was down a pawn in the middle game. I sort of said if I won that game, I thought it would all go go my in my favor. And I think once um, once uh, Yu Yang blundered and lost that game, it sort of did start to go that way. If he'd won that game and it gets a two and a half, two and a half, I think I would have probably switched it up. But yeah, after that, it was just very smooth. Are you approaching the speed chess championships any differently this this year, or is it pretty much uh, routine every year that you the way you approach it? Um, hmm. I'm trying to figure out which answer I want to give. I mean, uh, actually, I'll 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 make a comment. Actually, yesterday there was a match that Magus played against Ali Reza Ferugia in the Chess Champions Tour, and I felt very much like Magus was intentionally trying to play slightly dubious openings to see if Ali Reza would be able to punish him. Um, and I, I feel like in the SEC, I'm starting to kind of do the same sort of thing where it's not so much dubious positions, but I'm, I'm trying to make it more challenging, at least in the early rounds. Cause I feel like on average, um, I'm going to be, be winning if we get to like the three, one or the one, one. So I feel like I try to tinker and just, just mix it up a little bit more than I usually would. Um, we'll see it. We'll see if it continues to work or not. I think last time I played against, um, I played against Pravi and I did something pretty similar. I played like H3, like B3, all kinds of silly stuff, but uh, I'm just trying to make it, make it interesting. All righty, Cara. And in the next match, you'll play against a winner of the matchup between Fabiana Caruana and Noter Beck at the Satorov. Who do you think will win that one? And are you looking forward to one of those two players uh, more than the other? Um, I mean, I, I would say that in general, I'm probably hoping to play Fabiano just because I think against Fabiano in one plus one, I should have a bigger advantage than I do against Noterbeck. And I'm just, I mean, maybe that's wrong on my part. Maybe, maybe, maybe Fabiano is better bullet, but I, I guess I would say that probably Fabiano just because I've played him so many times more familiar. Noterbeck, it's a little bit, a little bit harder to judge. Um, and I haven't played him as many times, so a lot less experience. So probably Fabiano, but again, all, all these players in the Speech House Championship are very, very strong. So, um, you know, it's it's not going to be easy. Uh, Hikaru, we have some featured chat questions, and one of them is, when do you think you were at your strongest uh, in Speech Chess? Uh, if that's happened already. <laughs> Well, I mean, I think that there are a couple things there. The first one that for a lot of people out there who are watching are probably unaware of is that there's a huge difference between playing with increment and without increment. So, for example, to, to allude to another streamer, I think without increment, for example, Daniel, Daniel Naroditsky is probably top five easily, whereas I think without increment, he's probably maybe like top 20 or top 25. So it's sort of a question where I have to break it down by increment or, or non-increment. I think without increment, probably my peak would have been Probably around the time that I was getting to my records, uh, my record high on ICC, I want to say maybe like 2005 or 2006, roughly, or maybe a little bit after that even. Um, I think that with increment, I'm actually probably better now, I would say, than I've ever been, I think. Um, so I think with increment, I'm, I'm at my best or very close to it. But I think without increment, I was much better maybe a good 10 to 15 years ago. All right. And Hikaru, so you won by a 10-point margin. You won 19 to 9. Did you expect to win by a larger margin? Was it ever on the back of your mind or, or not? 
I mean, the, the margin doesn't matter. I mean, the, the, the tricky thing is once you build a big advantage, you start thinking about the rating. This is the problem. So you start thinking about the rating sometimes, and they, they, there's some of these thoughts that matter. Um, but, you know, I, I think that Yu Yangi's credit in this match, he actually played quite well. He, he was always fighting. Even when the match was completely out of reach in the bolt, he still he still was playing good moves and trying to win games. Um, and and there, were the, there, was, there were a couple of moments when the match wasn't ever really in doubt per se, but I, I sort of was getting mad at myself. On the three plus one, there was a game that I lost where I think the margin got back to maybe three points or two points even. And then I then I ran three out of the four final games uh, in that portion. So, I mean, to you, Yankee's credit, he made it very, he, he made it very difficult. And even the bullet, I really, I was not happy with the way I was playing at various moments. So uh, I, I did have to actually extend myself a bit. Um, so, I mean, more credit, you know, all the credit in the world goes to you, Yankee, for making it so, uh, so, so exciting. Well, Hikaru, thank you for joining us for some post-match comments. Want to wish you good luck in your next round while Benjamin and I take a look at the rest of the SEC bracket. Thank you, guys. Hope you have a good day. All thank you, Hikaru. Right. So always a pleasure to be joined by Hikaru. So yeah, let's have a very quick look at the bracket. We see that Hikaru moves on to the quarterfinals. And again, he's gonna play against the winner of Fabiana Caruana against Nodir Beck of the Satoru. But Eric, we also have some other amazing matchups. We have Nihal versus Sorana, MVL against Gukesh. Is there anyone that is there any matchup that catches your eye right away? Um I mean I'm interested in the newer generation, like uh, uh, Gukesh. Oh, how he's been playing a classical. I'm pretty intrigued how he's going to do in the SEC. I like watching Nihal. Uh, when you have the big names for like Faruja, I guess one outside thing is I'm happy that Ding is playing. He doesn't play that much and he is the world champion. So to have him in the event, and I remember, you know, he's, he's put up some tough battles uh, in the past. So it'd be good to see the reigning world champion in action and some of the top, uh, top youngsters. Yeah, no, for sure. And yeah, we have some, uh, we also have the matchup between Wesley So against Levon Aronian. Quite unfortunate that one of them is already going to leave the field after the first round. I think the one is going to be pretty close. The one, as we talked about, between Fabiana and Noderbeck is going to be close. Nihal against Sarana, I think, will be close. Sarana's really upped his game online uh, over the last couple of years. So many matches to look forward to. And uh, they're coming just day after day, you guys. So uh, you definitely want to check out the schedule that we have coming up for you all. So we have the Speed Chess Championships. This was the very first match of the event, but we have something else uh, coming up too, uh, Benjamin. We have Chess Clash. Mark your calendars. We're teaming up with Supercell for Chess Clash, an epic series of chess and class challenges featuring your favorite creators. It's a star-studded lineup. Alexandra Botez, Gotham Chess, Clash with Ash, Sapnap, and more are gonna battle it out in the ultimate strategy game competition. Which clan will prevail? Tune into Chess Clash on September 7th at 2 p.m. Eastern. Use exclamation mark clash in chat to learn more. Yes, yeah, so, Benjamin. Uh, day one, SEC. Any final thoughts? Yeah, it was a it was a fun day of chess. I think it's always exciting to see Hikaru play, and it's kind of scary to think for his opponents that he didn't extend himself to the fullest. I do expect him to do that against Fabiano. I don't think he will mess around as much. Maybe, you know, when there's like a six uh, point gap in, in the bullet, maybe then he will. But I think that much he's going to take a lot more uh, seriously. What do you think, Eric? Definitely. I mean, Hikaru is always, he's just so consistent. Uh, his performance is here. It's, it's, it's a pleasure to watch. And uh, I do think he's ramping up for the more serious matches towards the very end. But yeah, I think uh, people want decisive chess. They want the top players in the world. This format is uh, conducive for that. So I had a good day, day one with you, uh, Mr. Bach, and uh, we're gonna go for one final break. And preview.